brought together by the passion for competition and the allure of capturing gold. Teams from around the globe wait for their chance to write history in the shadow of these pyramids. Hosted by the crazy cat's eyes in the dunes nestled between two rivers, the quest for glory begins now. Welcome everyone to the highest echelon of marble sports, the 2021 Marble League. I'm Greg Woods as we take a look at this example run, which will set the tone for the beginning of this multi-round event. The wave goes like that. Two teams streaking down toward the end of the course. You don't want to get too far. If you end up in that catch basin, you get zero points. But the more team members you have farther down, the better. Leo Catra up there with the referee will fire the starting gun. And the hosts will be taking on the Shining Swarm. In the first run of the day, each team puts one in that catch basin. And the Shining Swarm come out with the early lead, 28 to 25. Coming up next, Raspberry Racers have whoa, one down in the end and two in the nines. And otherwise, on the flip side to that, with Momo putting one for a zero, that's an easy win. Raspberry Racers go to the top, getting well past 30. That 36 mark awaits the Hazers and the O-Rangers. Trying not to get momentum too much, and that was a disastrous run for the Hazers. As it's a wash down in that 10, dip farther down. Well, Rangers put one in the eight, though. That makes a difference. 28 to 20 is the score. That's recovering well, even though they put two for a goose egg. The Green Ducks and the Thunderbolts now in run four of 16. Green Ducks leaving one well behind in the six, and then put everybody else for a zero. That was a shambolic run for the Green Ducks, who net just six points. Next up, the Limers and the Savage Speeders. Oh, and that is an equally disastrous run for the Speeders. Just nine points for the defending champions. Chocolatiers. Down there with Mellow Yellow. Bounding they come in a collision in the 10 area. Pitches one of the Chocolatiers beyond. And Mellow Yellow comes away with 34 points. Just too shy of the Raspberry Racers leading total. Minty Maniacs and the Rojo Rollers. Everybody bunched together. Oh, and then two end up beyond four Minty Maniacs. Not a great run for the Rojo Rollers either. Good enough for fifth so far with a 26. Indigo Stars and the Gliding Glaciers head out now. And two end up a bit too far. Make that three. Oh, there's one and there's another one by the wall. Indigo Stars are only going to have 10 points. Now, this was the first part. Every team is going to get another round. So taking a check at where we are thus far, the Raspberry Racers just won off of that Marble League record, 37. Just two teams, by the way, out of all of those runs, were able to keep all of their marbles as scorers. Everybody else had at least one that ended up as a zero. Keep them out of there. Make sure everybody scores. Shining Swarm and the Crazy Cat's Eyes now. In run nine of 16. These will set the early marks for everybody else to chase and too eager for the Crazy Cat's Eyes. Maybe they were a bit pumped up after that first run and they net just a 16. Up next, Raspberry Racers are gonna make that same mistake. And Team Momo is hanging in there. Raspberry Racers head to second place for now. Or very early on in these runs, so don't let some of those provisional positions get you going. Oh, Rangers now. Lose one, well back, is that four or five? All the way back there in the five spot. And the Hazers will come out with a 28-23 win, but the O'Rangers early total keeps them in third place for now. Some of these teams building up a large buffer through the first run. 
they can afford to struggle in the second. Thunderbolts and Green Ducks chasing perfection, though. Two good runs if they can get them. That's what's going to win you medals. And that was not a great run for the Green Ducks. They're down in 14th spot. The Thunderbolts elevate to third. They're still holding on in the hunt for an early medal. Savage Speeders and the Limers now. Off they go, and the Speeders, having one lag behind, manages to get into the eight. They do drop one in the catch basin, two for the Limers. And this should be a nice point total for the Savage Speeders, 27. But that early run really hurt them. They have the eighth spot for now. Getting into the final few runs now. Mellow Yellow and Chocolatiers. Mellow Yellow, everybody is right up there. Is it going to be too much? Both teams lose two. But look at those two dancing in the 10. That is good enough to get Mellow Yellow up to second place with just a paltry 20. That was after their 34 that they had in round one. What can be done here? Not as good a run for the Rojo Rollers, 19 to 28 for the Minty Maniacs. That puts them in the top 10, and that's where they will stay because there's only one run to go. Gliding Glaciers and Indigo Stars, they're gonna need some mammoth scores here to climb up the order. And they're gonna get some decent scores here, 38, and that's enough to not only set a Marble League record, but the Indigo Stars are going to capture gold. Prescient indeed talking about big totals. And that's enough for the Indigo Stars to dethrone the Raspberry Racers and capture their first gold in the Marble League. Racers get silver, Mellow Yellow captures bronze. Congratulations to our podium finishers. Indigo Stars are ecstatic. In the swing wave, they win gold. Mellow Yellow coming in. That is their sixth bronze medal in their careers in the Marble League. Raspberry Racers, that is their sixth silver medal in their Marble League careers as well. And so, end of the first event, naturally that is where the scores shake out. Just one team yet to score a point, and that is the Green Ducks, the hosts, struggling down there in 14th, but still a long way to go, and we hope that you will join us throughout. Click that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time here in the Marble League. An old favorite moves us on to round two of the 2021 Marble League, hosted by the Crazy Cat's Eyes. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. Welcome to a test of precision and teamwork in balancing. This is an event that has been in quite a few Marble Leagues over time. In fact, four different teams have two medals to their name in this very event. And you can see that specter of the wave back behind them. If you want to make some redemption happen, you're gonna have to do it literally in the shadow of that wave. The red attendance will give us an example here. Several will splay off to the sides, but the goal is to keep down that red center line and end up in the green for a tidy 130 points. All of the distance totals will be added together, and there is how it will shake out for the end results. And look at the crowd. Half of them probably eyes on that trophy there the first time they see it. When you see it in person, it is pretty stunning. The Indigo Stars, the winner of the last event, are not going to win this event. Oh boy, that was paltry from the get-go. They bunched up on each other. There were a lot of collisions in there. You wonder if they got all of their energy out in the win of that last event. <laughs> Didn't have any in the tank now. And we will have our first finisher here. Raspberry Racers are going to take one all the way to 130, an 83, and a 53, and a 23 in there as well. And that is the early mark to beat. 16 runs that we will see here. This one is the third. Mellow Yellow now drops it off to the side. Not where they hope to be. 
218 is the total for a team that was actually runner-up back in the balance in 2016's Marble League. That was their top finish overall. Thunderbolts are going to take one square down the middle and drop into the 132 off to the near side. And one got a fine run down to 72, good enough provisionally for second place. Thunderbolts have never meddled in balancing. They are a team that is hoping to improve greatly on their 2020 finish in the Marble League of just 13th. Here's another team that is hoping to have a great finish. They weren't here last year, and that's the Gliding Glaciers. They do not have a single finisher, but do get a 274. That's good enough provisionally for second place. The Shining Swarm up now, and it falls apart just past the midway point for a 206. Two fell off before they reached 50. Next up, the O-Rangers, a team that we usually think of as speed bound, not so much precision, and it shows with a 188. Already nearing the halfway point of this entire event. Well, we get some competing chants echoing back and forth through the stadium. The fans are getting into this. Next up, the Hazers. They come out three to the far side. Tiptoeing down on the near will lead to a 130, and the Hazers move into the top spot with 329. That was just perched on the precipice of falling off, but the Hazers held it together, and with half the field gone, they sit atop the leaderboard by a sizable margin. Next up, the Minty Maniacs. Winner of this event in the Hubalino tournament back in 2018. And it's slow and steady, but can't draw it into the green at the end. They fall off, and that is only good enough for fifth. Look at the 28 that fell off instantly to the far side. 46 was not too much better. All three teams that medaled in the previous event of the Wave in this Marble League have gone, and only the racers are doing well. Let's see what the Savage Speeders can do. Disaster at the start, but they try to claw it back and can't get it done. 2.30 is middle of the pack as well in sixth. So many strategies that you can adopt in this balancing, and you'll see teams try several different ones. Momo is great working together but how well will it go in this one? Oh, just barely making it to the green. And what do the points totals work out to? 285, that puts them provisionally in the bronze position. You know, to finish my thought on some of those formations and things that the teams try, it doesn't always work once the gate goes up and you are released down the roll. A lot of times you'll see it completely fall apart. The Rojo Rollers all go to the far side. Now that tells me that they were not coordinated coming out of the gate. Maybe they were a bit antsy. Maybe they were also lined up wrong in how they had squared on the other side of that gate. It's tough to tell. But when you see them all go to one side, that's something the coach is going to have to think about. The Limers don't have that problem. They fall to each side, but a 267 only lifts them up to sixth. Now the crazy cat's eyes. The home team and former bronze medalists back in 2019 in this event. But they have little to cheer about for a 12th place and a 2.02. Well, the wave is trying to keep some energy in the stadium, but now with just a couple of runs to go, we are already seeing guaranteed medalists here. And the Chocolatiers lose three at the beginning. They can't hold one to the end. That will get far down the order, but Chocolatiers move into 12th. They're trying to beat that 329, and that 329, by the way, is guaranteed no worse than a silver medal. It's all up to the run of the Green Ducks right now. 16 of 16. The Ducks are away. They bump into each other. Three hold on. Now two are going to make it to the end. This could be a huge total for them. Were it not for that one just shy of 50, it is enough. 405. The Green Ducks have gold in the balance. They were bronze medal in the friendly round. 
but a 4.05 clears the field handily. The Hazers get silver, and the Raspberry Racers get bronze. Talk about leaving it right to the end. The Green Ducks get it done. And for the Green Ducks, who finished just 12th in the Marble League last year, they will improve. That is their third gold medal of their entire still illustrious careers. They finished second back in 2019. That was their first outing in any Marble League. And what does that do to the overall standings as we watch them shoot from the bottom of the order? Zero points all the way up to third place. Raspberry Racers take the top spot. Hazers jump six into second, but it is still anybody's championship. As the energy high in the stadium, it will continue on to the next event where we hope to see you if you click that subscribe button and join us next time. arguably the fastest event in all of the Marvel League events that we will see during this tournament. The five meter sprint awaits our competitors after two different winners to start the Marvel League in 2021. Only the Raspberry Racers have appeared on the podium both times, but never for gold. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. Indigo Stars won the wave, Green Ducks won the balancing, but who will capture this six second blast down the course as we see the attendance from the crazy cat's eyes giving us an example some can be quicker out of the gate some can be more hesitant like we saw down on the bottom lane that can lead to a much slower path across this finish line with wonderful slow-mo shots into that sandy area that catches you and hopefully stops you from smashing against that back wall if you come across the line first i don't think you'll mind but some worry a bit too much about the landing rather than how they get there. Mellow Yellow, Hazers, Savage Speeders, and the Green Ducks now, and it's the Ducks that get away cleanly, and best of anybody, they're gonna hold it wire to wire all the way across the line, unofficially 6.02. No, that comes down, 5.906, and that's a new Marble League record in the first run of the day. Billy smashes it, 14 thousandths of a second, and just like that, we're on to the next one. Oh, disastrous start for Raspberry Racers on the top lane. Down on the bottom, clean as can be, Shining Swarm. Streaking across, and that's a dead heat for second place. It's stretched a bit at the line. Iceberg is going to come across. Shining Swarm, though, get the win, 5-9-2-5. Remember, top two advance, then it gets sorted by time. Chocolatiers, Minty Maniacs, Thunderbolts, and the Limers. Chocolatiers and the Thunderbolts, best of all of them out of the lane. Thunderbolts stretching it three lengths across the line. And what's the time on this one? 5916. Boy, getting very near to that Marble League record in all of the first heats so far. Does that mean that it will fall once we get past the heats? I don't know. Crazy Cat Size, Indigo Stars, Momo and Rojo Rollers. And it's Crazy Cat Size getting the lead. And this will be a popular heat win in front of the home crowd. Oh, wait a minute, it's gonna be even more popular. By five thousandths of a second, Green Eye has beaten the Marble League record. You knew the Crazy Cat's Eyes would be a favorite in this event after Marbula won, and it's paying off so far. The rest of the team's just watching in awe. The speed that was put down here and the entire top five of last year's event are out already. That event, by the way, last year, won by the Minty Maniacs. Next up, Gliding Glaciers, Thunderbolts, Green Ducks, and Momo. Down we come here in this semifinal. This is going to be a closer one. Across the line it comes. And was that Iceberg again? Yes, the photo finish for second place, though, between Momo Mo and Billy. And it is Momo Mo, 33 thousandths of a second behind Iceberg of the Gliding Glaciers. They will advance. Comes at you very quickly. Shining Swarm, Crazy Cat Size, Chocolatiers, and Mellow Yellow. Chocolatiers fired out of a cannon at the start. Is anybody going to be able to catch him? It's going to be closer at the line, but the answer is no. Crazy Cat Size will advance, however. Oh, wait a minute. Chocolatiers have done it again, and this is a demolishing of the record. 
by taking off another hundredth. Oh boy, the Marble League record is not safe from anyone. We've seen so many marbles reset it, and the best part is, we may not be done, and there are medals at stake. And that was a great run from Crazy Cat's Eyes as well. You take a look at the bottom of the order, those who have not moved on. Just eight thousandths between Shining Swarm and Mellow Yellow, and several others so close to swapping positions or even advancing. All right, the final. Momo, Gliding Glaciers, Crazy Cat's Eyes and the Chocolatiers. Crazy Cat's Eyes are off to a great start. Chocolatiers falling behind. Gliding Glaciers are getting past now on the top lane, but it's the Crazy Cat's Eyes who will win gold. And why not? Another Marble League record. Two times it has been reset by Green Eye. The Crazy Cat's Eyes finally break that host cursed at least for an event and win the five meter sprint what a dominant performance by the way from green Eye. definitely the best event back in 2019 for this very marble got bronze once before never a gold medal but this time it's coming home to the crazy cat's eyes and as many of you may know, by the way, there is a Marble League game coming in fall 2021. It'll have all the competitors and events from this year's Marble League. You can support us by making this possible by donating to our campaign with Big Head Games on Indiegogo. More info in the video description. Mo 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 brings home the silver. Iceberg brings home the bronze to the Gliding Glaciers, who will gladly accept that one. Have you caught your breath yet, by the way? Let's see what happens in the overall standings. Oh, and what a jump. Seven for Team Momo, tied with the Gliding Glaciers up top. Raspberry Racers drop to third, tied with the Hazers. Everybody's still so bunched up as we get ready for the next event, the Funnel Endurance. Sometimes the sheer complexity of competition in the Marble League can leave one spinning. But in this case, the Funnel Endurance, that's kind of the point. The goal is to stay in the funnels the longest. The marble that can could bring home a gold medal. As we work our way still in the early part of the Marble League, I'm Greg Woods. Thank you so much for joining us. You see the team standings right now, and it's knotted close. 37 up top between Momo and Gliding Glaciers. It just keeps going down like that. A point or two here or there is going to make all the difference by the time we reach the final event and crown an overall champion. But individual runs, those are up for grabs in the meantime. As we see the Crazy Cat Size attendance demonstrate this new course, very similar to ones that we have had in the past. And we talk about the past in funnel endurance and funnel racing, if you will. This event has been in so many iterations of the Marble League, whether it's the friendly rounds or the qualifiers or the showdowns, on and on and on. As a result, you have many marble teams that have a great number of runs under their belt. They have so much experience in this event, it can make a huge difference for their strategy and execution. As we see, you know, we're not passing near a black hole and things are getting a little crazy from a different perspective. These black hole funnels are the end part of the course, and this is sped up footage. As we see our final finisher, and just three of them down in there. Apparently one of them got stuck. The blue attendant must be, ah, hiding under one of those black holes. Reached the singularity, perhaps, and we'll go no further. Well, I digress. We get ready for Group A in this competition. Always interesting to see these early movements and who can position themselves well at the start of this event. We drop on through. And Frost from the Gliding Glaciers holding on fairly well up there. Savage Speeders are dropping through quickly with Wizzy. That's a team that has done very well in these events over time. A three marble race up top. That changes now, and it's Rojo Dose from the Rojo Rollers. Standing strong and now loses that top spot. Remember, staying in the longest. We have three that have dropped down into those intermediate blue funnels, new additions for this course in the Marble League. And it looks like Minty Drizzle from Minty Maniacs has taken the lead. Minty Maniacs, they have placed in this event on the podium several times over the years. 
It has swung back, however. Now we've got four, five marbles in the first blue funnel. We already have somebody dropping through down at the bottom. Is that Frost from the Gliding Glaciers? The lead has completely evaporated. Rojo Dos fights back to take the top spot in the first of the blues. Now comes down into the second. We already have somebody that is Frost, I believe, in that second of three green funnels. Minty Maniacs fighting now. They're in second place as they drop on through and take that very oblong pathway, and they get a collision partially hidden by the blue funnel that definitely changes their momentum. You really see shoulders and elbows out in an event like this, and sometimes that can make some friendships a bit frayed. Yelly from Mellow Yellow has fallen into the dubious spot of last place, threatening to drop on through and finish first. That may not happen, though, with much contact in the bottom, no it will, Yelly comes through, 139.14, clock continues to tick. Slow to a crawl are the top three, and the top one going to the Savage Speeders. They now are in the catbird seat to potentially win this event, at least win this group, however. Oh, Frost ended up finishing sixth, bingo from the Indigo Stars limelight, it's a two marble race, Savage Speeders lose it in third, Momo had a chance for a second. But it does swing back to Rojo Dos of the Rojo Rollers here in heat number one. 203.22 for Rojo Dos in Group A. As now we prepare for Group B. They've seen the times to beat. And we now have a couple of captains in this lineup as well, Shiny from the Shining Swarm is one of them, and Kinoen from the O'Rangers is another. The O'Rangers, that's another team that they have placed in pretty much every podium spot that you could in the Funnel Endurance over the years. And several wobbles dropping through extremely quickly. Shock from the Thunderbolts is now threatening to fall on through, and does. Last place. Up top, it is the O'Rangers. The captain doing what must be done to bring this one home. Foggy from the Hazers was side by side and then leapt down through two funnels almost instantly. Rezzy from the Raspberry Racers now circling that opening along with the O-Rangers who now drop on through. They have lost the lead. Rezzy doing a superb job in the final orange funnel. Trying to be the only one in the blue, won't do it, but has the O-Rangers circling through at a perilous rate. And they fall on down to the second of the blue funnels. Four or more into the black hole funnels of the green. Oh, and coming through, I believe that's Shiny from the Shining Swarm. Not where they wanted to be. The Rangers taking that very wide line, trying to hold on to second place and hoping maybe for some collisions after Rezzy comes down another funnel. Six. Circle in the middle of the greens. Half a dozen now. Dropping on through, was that Mocha from the Chocolatiers, I believe. Rezzy holds the top spot, everybody fitting within this frame. Three, four marbles down in that bottom one. Who's gonna fall through first? Trying desperately to avoid being dead last. And that one will go to the Hazers. Ducky from the Green Duck, Shiny comes through next in sixth. Rezzy still holding on to that top spot. The O'Rangers trying to keep it wide if they can, but they get suckered to the middle and nearly fall on through. They do now, and it's a two marble race between the Thunderbolts as they take second place. And now we have to watch the time. 2.03.22 was the first time in Group A, and look at the masterful job. This is otherworldly from Rezzy. The Raspberry Racers are playing for time right now because they know they've won the group. And this isn't going to be close. New course, so of course difficult to compare to times in previous years. But this performance, not putting a single foot wrong. 235.68. That is unreal 36 seconds is the gap between first and second so the bottom eight are eliminated bingo down to yelly and the top eight will move on to the final
Here was the Savage Speeders moment when things were looking so promising for them farther up the course. A team that had won this event in 2019. Finals are now coming up. They give a slight break in between so that everybody can catch their breath because this is definitely an endurance race. It lives up to the name for sure. Especially when you see that 235.68. Is anybody going to get near that this time as we drop on through and chase the gold? Oh, Rangers. Raspberry Racers, Chocolatiers all up top. It's the Rangers and the Raspberry Racers once again in the top of the field. Speed's really picking up through those orange funnels once they start to get down to the point of no return and dropping on through. Already now two takers into the blue funnels. And is that Rezzy? Rezzy has plummeted on through. If so, that is a huge fall from grace. The Rangers are also now in effective third place. The Thunderbolts have taken the lead. That is surprising given the results that we've seen, but perhaps Rezzy just exerted a bit too much, possibly too much showboating there at the end. Trying to go for a record that really is not gonna mean that much if gold or, for that matter, silver or bronze escapes them. Chocolatiers holding that top spot. Very widest possible angle in the last of the blue funnels. Raspberry Racers falling down into the middle of the greens. They'll also be joined by the O'Rangers, amongst others, down there. I don't know if we are going to see anything like we saw in the second run of the two heats. We're already down to a minute and a half, passed on the clock, and nearly everybody is in the second to last funnel. Chocolatiers finally join them in that middle of the three. And now the Thunderbolts, who had taken the lead, they are threatening to drop on through first, along with Team Momo. Raspberry Racers are going to join them. The Rangers, Momo, shoulder to shoulder with quite a few down there. Chocolatiers are up top along with the Rojo Rollers. Those two may be fighting for the win. Oh, and look at the chaos down here. It's a traffic jam in the final funnel. Chocolatiers look set well on a wide arc. If they can avoid collisions, then they don't. Can they keep it going? Thunderbolts fall on through. Raspberry Racers are still holding it wide along with the Chocolatiers. This is going to be for gold and silver. Who will blink first? The Chocolatiers win gold. Rezzy did the blinking. And is a great recovery. What was looking so strong at the top of the course fell apart in the middle. But a fantastic final flight of funnels gives Rezzy a decent finish. That is the Chocolatiers' first gold medal since 2017 in the long jump. And I know it's in their name, but isn't victory sweet? Rezzy and Rojo Dos fill out the podium. Rojo Dos, that's Rojo Roller's first medal since 2016 high jump. Going back in the record books here. And teams are happy to do it. Beneath this beautiful cauldron, Mocha from the Chocolatiers wins over Rezzy and Rojo Dos from Raspberry Racers and Rojo Rollers. Shock from the Thunderbolts just missed out on the podium. What does this do to the standings as they cycle their way up through? The Raspberry Racers have jumped two up to first and now have a lead over Momo and the Gliding Glaciers. Thunderbolts in fourth. Chocolatiers jump seven to fifth. By the way, our Patreon Tally McPike wants to say happy birthday to EJ. Congratulations on your ninth birthday. We hope to see you back here for our next event, the 5 Meter Relay. Thanks for watching, everyone. Four events down in this year's Marble League, and thus far we've had two for individual marbles and two for team events. We've had feats of strength, we've had feats of precision and of speed, but this traditionally combines both teamwork and that element of speed together in the five meter relay. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. Raspberry Racers lead Team Momo and the Gliding Glaciers. Thunderbolts and Chocolatiers have been making plenty of moves farther back in the field, but this particular event 
requires teams to work together in a way that we have not seen in quite the same way. As the attendants give us a prime example of the relay race, you'll notice that any one marble cannot win or lose this race earlier up on the course. Sometimes that anchor leg can make all the difference, but it's the handoffs that can make or break your run in the possible end result. If you're clean on the handoffs, then you will be a bit quicker down the course in your hunt for that. No, not the psychedelic glowing pyramid back there. I'm talking about that trophy for the Marble League as we get ready for the first run of the day. Chocolatiers, Limers, Indigo Stars, and the defending champions, the Savage Speeders. Savage Speeders get off to a half-length lead, and it grows through this third handoff into the anchor leg, and the Savage Speeders will cruise across. Indigo Stars were close behind, but ultimately could not hang with them. They still are in the transfer spot, top two, will move on. Shining Swarm, Raspberry Racers, Minty Maniacs, and the Gliding Glaciers. Shining Swarm up top with a huge lead. Minty Maniacs have a solid second place, and both of those will advance. Times don't necessarily mean too much if you're in the top two of these heats. If you're in the bottom two facing elimination, then that is what will set your order in the bottom part of the standings. But the Shining Swarm and the Minty Maniacs will move on. Green Ducks, Thunderbolts, Hazers and the Crazy Cat's Eyes. And it's the home team with a lead. Yellow Eye through the second handoff. Into the final. Can they hold on? They will. And the Thunderbolts will take second. Look at how far behind the Thunderbolts were through that handoff. And then a wonderful transfer there. Almost getting up there with Crazy Cat's Eyes. Nobody near that Marble League record, 7918. Maybe saving that for the finals. Rojo Rollers, O Rangers, Momo and Mellow Yellow. It's Mellow Yellow with the lead through the first handoff, but Momo now takes it through the bottom part of the course. O Rangers speed past them and will beat them across the line. And will move on. The O Rangers, two time defending silver medalists in this event. They were third in this year's friendly. And they continue the strong form. Ninth through 16th. As we said, based on time, the Green Ducks, best of the rest down there. As for everybody else, we move to the semifinals. Two runs, and the top two will advance from there. Minty Maniacs, Crazy Cat's Eyes, Savage Speeders, and Team Momo. Speeders quick out of the gate. Team Momo down on the bottom was hanging with him for a while. Speeders still stretching it through the final handoff. Can they be caught? No. And it will be the Speeders and Momo that will make it to the final. Just a length apart between them. Minty Maniacs gave it a nice try up top there. And the home team Crazy Cat's Eyes just misses out on transferring in fourth place in this heat. Thunderbolts, Indigo Stars, Shining Swarm, and the O'Rangers. Thunderbolts, wonderful out of the gate. Oh, Rangers down in the bottom. They take the lead, and now they fall dead last. Thunderbolts and Indigo Stars are going to race to the line. This may be a photo finish. Oh, look at that. Indigo Stars get it over the Shining Swarm. The top three separated by just 66 thousandths of a second. Thunderbolts coming oh so close. Thunderbolts, Minty Maniacs, Crazy Cat Size, and the O'Rangers are those next four that will not advance as we get ready for the final. We've got three time gold medalists, the only team, in fact, to win this event more than once in the Savage Speeders. And they are definitely the odds on favorite with some superb performances in the heats here. But watch out for Team Momo, Indigo Stars, and Shining Swarm. Indigo Stars get the better jump. Savage Speeders are dead last here. Momo up top. Here come the Speeders across the line, and it's another gold medal. Moments of doubt, and instead, more perfection. 8.3 flat, and the Savage Speeders are four-time gold medalists in five years of this event.
Team Momo gets the silver. Shining Swarm gets the bronze. Shining Swarm in doing that, by the way, that's their first Marble League medal in some four years. You gotta go back to 2017 to the infamous fidget spinner collision. Plug your ears there, Momo. No, they're not listening to me. They're celebrating up on the podium. Reminder, there are also new perks for the game. You can become a super fan and get your marble in the stands of your favorite team. We'll talk about that new game coming out. Click the link down below in the video's description. Go support us on Indiegogo. 25 points to the Savage Speeders, and they saved their best run for last. It wasn't the best of the entire day. We did get some low eights, namely out of the Shining Swarm there. But that was pretty darn good. What does this do to the overall standings? Savage Speeders shoot their way up nine spots just off the podium. Momo jumps up seven points clear of the Raspberry Racers to take P1, and the Thunderbolts hold in third. Patreon shout out, by the way, from Dennis, who says, Alyssa, I love you. Aw. Next event, jousting. Be here, subscribe for more, and we'll see you then. Some 700 years ago, kings could often be found in the tilts of jousting. Today, Hello, the third duo Today's event event in Marble jousting. League history, as we get ready for the Marble League version of jousting. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. The duo events, meaning just two marbles, compete per team in this one, so you have to choose your partnership wisely. And the goal is to streak toward each other, not too dissimilar from the classic version of jousting, and push that center ball bearing as far into the opposite team's territory as you can. So you see the yellow pupils in that one dislodge the ball toward the left, toward the green pupils, 4.8 the score or the distance in that one. A knockout tournament style format with a third place match awaits. As we get ready for Crazy Cat Size and Rojo Rollers, two captains on these teams, one apiece. You see that ball move to the right toward Rojo Rollers. That means Crazy Cat Size are going to get the win. That was a very solid impact. Very also similar launch backward after the collision for a couple of those marbles. It's all about reading your opponents as you come down that ramp. Speedy and Rapidly have participated in every duo event as a pair together. Oh, look at that, chasing the ball bearing. Try to give it that extra nudge. Not gonna get there in time. 6.2 Savage Speeders will get that win. Oh, look at that, up the ramp Speedy went and then decided, wait, I'm gonna have a chance at this. Tried to get over there to advance it farther than 6.2. That ball bearing being pulled over to the side. Unable to do it. Oh, Rangers and Shining Swarm now. And that ball didn't move. That is a tie. We're going to have to do that again. Shining Swarm, bronze medalists in the last event at the five meter relay. And they are going to be on the wrong end of this one. 4.1 to the O Rangers. Mandarin and Tangerine. And look at that, a similar strategy to what we saw from the Savage Speeders going up the ramp and anticipating where that ball bearing is going to go. Unfortunately, it never deviated from the center line. Otherwise, that would have been a pretty good idea. The Hazers and the Minty Maniacs. No captains in this one, but a decent result for the Hazers. Watching timing from above, you get a good sense of which pair reaches that center ball first, and then also the angles from it. You're watching the team from the other side. Are they moving slightly to your left or to your right, and how are you going to counter it? And that was countered beautifully by Mellow Yellow, 8.1 over Billy and Quacky. And look at the teamwork. You see them end up in the same section of sand. That is because of how solidly they impacted that ball bearing. Chocolatiers and Thunderbolts, you notice Fudge up there in the lineup. First time ever in the Marble League for Fudge. And Chocolatiers are going to get a win because of it. Thunder and Lightning trying to team up on the other side. Especially attempting to chase down after that initial impact. It was backspin rather than moving up the ramp that kept Lightning on the table. Down it goes. Doesn't have to be by much. 
who are just trying to get the win and advance to the next round. Chocolatiers, winners of the Funnel Endurance, of course, taking home a gold medal there. Raspberry Racers and the Limers throw back to the Fruit Circuit. Down they come, and that's going to be a tie. Good chance to see some different marbles compete in these duo events. Just one captain here, Sublime from the Limers. Take two. There's that little nudge that we've been waiting for somebody to connect. And for the Raspberry Racers, it happens, and they get the win. 4.0. Another one of those ramp ascensions. Come back down and just get the kiss there. Team Momo and Indigo Stars, including Montoya for Indigo. And Montoya will have another go on this one. Momo and Momo Mo on the other side. Indigo Stars are gold medalists from the wave, the very first event. Team Momo, they also get that connection. Now they've seen it happen. Wasn't a clean ascent up the ramp, but just enough to gather one's bearings, no pun intended, and go over and make that extra strike. Momo are silver medalists from the five meter sprint. We see ninth through 16th, those who are eliminated And the marbles roll on to the second round. We'll have the home team, the Crazy Cat's Eyes, who won that five meter sprint with Green Eye, back up in the blocks. The two best Marbula One teams right here. Two captains among them as well. It's Red Eye and Yellow Eye. We're going to suffer the defeat. Even though they reached the ball bearing first, look at the Savage Speeders using the same strategy as they had in the first round. Look at how dead center that is, right down the center line, just to give perhaps a bit more energy to that ball bearing. Every millimeter counts, as we've seen in those standings. That was a great performance there. Teams are starting to figure this out. Of course, it's the first time that this event has been in the Marble League, as the Hazers and O'Rangers are going to joust to a tie. So we'll do it again. Take two, down they come. They all glance off to the side. Oh, look at it going back to center and it's gonna stay just on the side of the O'Rangers. The Hazers will get the win, but only just. Look at the direction that it's taking here, heading off toward two o'clock from this angle. And then it starts to just sashay back to the middle. That slow-mo would have taken way too long. <laughs> <laughs> to go through the whole thing. Chocolatiers and Mellow Yellow coming in now. Oh, look at this. We've got dueling impacts from both sides. And despite the Chocolatiers having one right up against it, it will go the way of Mellow Yellow. Look at how high up the ramp. Is that Yellow that went all the way up there and came back down? Didn't move the ball bearing all that much. Chocolatiers at that point were kind of on the back foot. Didn't have the strength to send it the other direction. This is very interesting as we progress through this tournament. Raspberry Racers and Momo now. We'll just send it quivering, but we will re-joust. And this time Momo sends it well into the territory. It tries to curl back, but it's not gonna stay there. You know, I neglected to mention, Momo also getting a silver in the five meter sprint. They've got two silvers this year. So I, I think I shorted him one when I first said, oh, they're just the five meter relay silver medalists. This time they're working on a medal in jousting. Taking a look farther up the order now. Fifth through eighth is set. Of course, looking at furthest round, then most ties in the losing round. Margin of loss to determine the tie breaks. Four remain. The Savage Speeders and the Hazers are two of them. The Hazers, silver medalists, back in balancing in event number two. Are they feeling the bruises yet? It's a lot of heavy impacts. 
Oh, and that one actually sends the ball bearing to the near side for the first time in a while. Maybe the first time this entire game. So I'm not sure on that one. But either way, the Hazers will actually get the win on this one. And the Savage Speeders' fantastic run, which goes back a full event beyond this one, is going to come to an end, at least for this round. They will make it, of course, to the medal round to determine the bronze. Mellow Yellow and Team Momo here. Or will it stop on the table? It will. <laughs> that is 5.1. More great teamwork from Mellow Yellow. Of course, they ended up in slightly different areas of the sand this time, unlike the last round. But great teamwork making it happen. Our finals are set. We begin with the bronze match. Momo and the Savage Speeders. Down they come, and a great impact sends it in the direction of the Savage Speeders. Is it going to come back? No, it won't. Team Momo have their third medal of these games, and it's their first bronze of 2021. Just getting the angles right, saving up the energy. But now for the gold, Hazers and Mellow Yellow. Neither one's won a gold so far in these games, and it's going to be a resounding victory for the Hazers. 11.2. They got there almost at the same time, but the Hazers beating Mellow Yellow at their own game. They kept the formation tight. They imparted as much energy as they possibly could at just the right direction to send Mellow Yellow flying into the silver medal spot. It's the second medal of these games for the Hazers. And overall, they are no strangers when it comes to meddling in the Marble League. I mean that in a good way, not messing with it. <laughs> they have done that sometimes for other teams' championship hopes, certainly. They've meddled in those. But this was a fantastic performance to outlast everybody else in a physical event in its Marble League debut, the Hazers are your gold medalists in jousting. Mellow Yellow and Momo rounding out the podium in silver and bronze, respectively. This will shake up the order a bit. Hazers were well down in 11th place. They're going to vault all the way up to third. The top two remain where they are. The Savage Speeders are just one point behind the Hazers. Thunderbolts drop two. As we give a shout out from our Patreons. Hi to Matt and Cullen from Derek. The chase for that trophy and Marble League royalty continues. We hope you'll stay with us. If event six of the 2021 Marble League did not leave you jumping for joy, well, fear not, because we run on to event number seven, the five meter hurdles. Hey, everybody, I'm Greg Woods. Our three time medalists, Team Momo, thus far in these games, sit atop the standings after getting another one, this one bronze, in the last event of jousting. They were silver in the event before that and two events before that as well. This one, not a duo event, however, as we see demonstrated by the four pupils here in the land of the crazy cat's eyes inside this gorgeous stadium, launching themselves over these hurdles, different than we've seen in the past. Going a long ways back there, not where you want to be. You, you want to be in the early part of that. This, the near three-way photo finish, 8722. Let's see how that stacks up to professional competition once we get going in this event. Still, a lot of the Marble League left to go, however, so if your team maybe hasn't been running quite as well, perhaps this marks the turning point as we stretch it toward the end. Swifty from the Savage Speeders in there, along with Iceberg, Ruzzy, and Shiny. Swifty hasn't placed below fifth place in any event since the 2018 Marble League Ice Dash and is off to a huge start here. Swifty losing a little ground through the middle hurdles, but is picking it back up at the end and will cruise across the line. We've got one up top at the Gliding Glaciers, unable to make it past that hurdle. If you lose momentum anywhere on this course, things can get tough quickly. Of course, this one just heat number one, where the top two advance in a similar style format to what we have run in previous five meter dash events. 
that hurdle is all that much more difficult where you have a lot of trouble in one and it just compounds down the course. Crazy Cat's Eyes, Chocolatiers, Rojo Rollers, and Mellow Yellow up here. Oh, a hard hit there for Rojo Dos, losing a bunch of ground there. Mocha also is off to a great start and is nearly going to be caught by Yellow Eye across the line. A slow time overall, however. Everybody took it very easy in this run. Yella and Rojo Dos do not move on. And of course, it's not time necessarily that makes you advance, but if you do not advance, well, then you are more likely to be placed lower based on your time. Oh, Green Ducks were off to a great start and then fell all the way to last. Bottom lane of the Thunderbolts. Now it's the top lane there, second from the top. Oh, Rangers will get the win with Clementon and Shock passing Goose and Foggy. 8-8 eight, eight on that one. Team Momo, Minty Maniacs, Indigo Stars, and the Limers. A nice jump by Sublime on the bottom, the captain of the Limers. Being caught up top by Momo Momo, but not caught enough. Sublime beats Momo Momo to the line, and both of those two will advance. Minty Flav and Indy, the other two captains in this event, over the nine second mark and out of the running. I think that hurts Indigo Stars a tiny bit more. They're sitting in seventh in the overall standings. Limer's decently happy about that. Minty Flav, not so much. Just missing the top eight. And then it goes back from there. Iceberg, the only DNF out of our first set of runners. Giving the Marbles a chance to catch their breath as they regroup at the top of the course to get ready for the next round. This will be semifinals. With semifinal A up first, Momo, Savage Speeders, O-Rangers, and Crazy Cat Size. Big trouble for the Speeders in hurdle number one, but it's a dead heat up top and at the bottom. Momo will hold on, and I think the O-Rangers will get second place over Crazy Cat Size. Oh, that's a tough run for Swifty. Oh, the O-Rangers just 73 thousandths of a second behind Momo. The home team Crazy Cat's Eyes Yellow Eyes run screeches to a halt. And now, the second semifinal. Limers, Thunderbolts, Raspberry Racers, and Chocolatiers. It's Limers and the Chocolatiers ahead of the field. Easy victory for the two of them, easy advancement. In fact, they can let off the throttle and coast home. Sublime, 8430 Mocha comes in next, a tenth of a second adrift. You know, hurdles represent a very different challenge than what we are used to in speed events. It's all about keeping your center of gravity very low while still getting over the hurdles. We've seen some marbles try to take it a little bit too low and they end up porpoising and holding there. You see the times getting quicker for Crazy Cat's Eyes, but not quick enough. They'll finish in fifth, which is not the finish that they had hoped, but still a decent run for the home team. And you know, when I was glancing earlier, I saw Cleocatra smiling. And if you're the home team, that's always what you want. As we get ready for the final, O-Rangers, Limers, Momo, and the Chocolatiers. Momo, quickest out of the gate. O-Rangers up top hanging with the Limers. This is going to be a huge win for Team Momo. They're going to come across the line with daylight behind them. The O-Rangers in second. And it's a photo finish for third. No uncertainty up front for the first two. Where does this go? It'll be the Limers. Sublime captures bronze. Congratulations to our podium finishers. The Limers, the Rangers, and the winners, Team Momo. Team Momo captures the win and continues what has been a pretty dominant stretch in the last five events. Four medals during that time. This one, Momo Momo bringing it home. In addition to winning their first gold medal, Momo Momo also set the fastest time of the entire event. Appropriate. Sublime netting the Limers their first podium for the team since 2018 Snowboard Cross. Momo, all three of the Triple Crown track events, the sprint, the relays, and the hurdles, staking a claim for the fastest team in the 2021 Marble League. 8.169, saving the best for last. It's all about strategy when you come to these.
They went 25 points. Well, they're not going to move up top. Their lead grows over the Raspberry Racers and the Savage Speeders. Here's a shout out to our patron, Aaron. Loads of love from Scruff to his brother in all things life, marbles, and baking. From Carwin Bon Bon Llewellyn. As we get ready for block pushing in the next event, be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you ever find yourself metaphorically between a rock and a hard place, you may be the lead marble in block pushing. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. Something that is normally event seven traditionally in the Marble League has rolled to event eight. Team Momo, three straight podiums entering this event and they podiumed in block pushing last season. The Midnight Wisps are three time defending champions if you count the qualifiers in 2020 as well. The pupils show us how it's done with a variety of strategies to do it. Sometimes that lagging fourth marble ends up giving the final couple of centimeters that can make all the difference. Tight formations spread out. You're going to see it all over the course of block pushing, and it's going to come down to single decimal places, to the tenth or even the hundredth to determine a winner. How will it shake out in this difficult course that's going to leave some bruised and battered but ultimately triumphant? We're about to find out. Rojo Rollers, Crazy Cat's Eyes, Raspberry Racers, and the Gliding Glaciers will lead us off here. Everybody's staying tight except from the top line there. Now we get some separation. Oh, and see, that's a great example of that anchor push from the fourth marble. Look at how far behind for the Raspberry Racers. That one marble is just to add a skosh. Oh, and that skosh was a mighty good one. 92.95 resets the Marble League record. That's the first run of the day. That was pretty darn robust. Well, I wondered silently if we would see any sort of records fall during this one as we re-rack those same competitors just in different lanes and even things out. Oh, but it's not going to be even at all when you've got the Raspberry Racers going against three teams. Disappointing finish for Crazy Cat's Eyes there in lane three. But that is a fine pair of performances for the Raspberry Racers. Those front three bumbling together, pushing far as they can. The last flourish getting them this time past 87, nearly to 88. For a 180-65. We're going to do it another time here. Are going to do the same thing? Well, this time the Raspberry Racers, they are going to be beaten. Riding Glaciers are the ones handing them the defeat. Using that same strategy, it gets them into that neighborhood of 85. And another disappointing finish for Crazy Cat's Eyes. This has not been an event that the Cats have done terribly well in over time. Never a podium. Trying to change that here. One final go for these four marbles. And the Raspberry Racers come out on top once again. You know, they were silver in the friendly round of this event in 2020. Otherwise, that's their only appearance on the podium. Is that about to change? So looking at those top two runs, it appears, Raspberry Racers will hold the top spot at a combined run of two, equaling 180. 0.65. So you may not have to set the Marble League record to beat them, but you're going to have to be consistent. Mellow Yellow, Minty Maniacs, Chocolatiers, and the Shining Swarm now. Mellow Yellow will be first to hit the blocks. Shining Swarm will be close behind. Oh, and they edge forward at the end. Chocolatiers look like they will be bringing up the rear along with the Minty Maniacs. There's an angle just from the point of impact with the blocks. Shining Swarm got some unusual separation between marbles two and three that we don't often see, at least don't often see it work. It did give them the victory in these particular set of marbles. But remember, you're chasing a total. Position change. What can they do in their second of four runs? Chocolatiers will be the first to strike the blocks this time. Bringing well up the rear is not enough for them. Mellow Yellow 
will jump ahead and get the win in this particular heat, but it's not going to be as far as they had before. Metal Yellow, bronze medalists in this event in 2019. But nobody getting really far past 80. That's going to make that chase of a 180.65 all that much tougher. Perhaps they're saving some energy for the final two runs, just building up steadily. You don't want to injure yourself or overexert in the first two of your four runs, and leaving nothing in the tank for the final two. Everybody dead even as they strike the red blocks, pushing them farther. Shining Swarm in that range of 80. We'll add to their total. Chocolatiers come in second. Pretty textbook, really, for our bottom three finishers overall in that run. They just didn't have the strength to do it. So 160.35 for the Shining Swarm is their top total thus far. Anybody could jump them, though. They are slow out of the blocks this time. What will it mean at the end? This is going to be very close. A long lag from the Anchor Marble. And they may have just inched them forward, but look at the distance. Maybe a victory, yes, but it doesn't mean all that much. And the barely breaks 70. So still their best total, 160.35. We take a look at where everybody is thus far. Gliding Glaciers up into second place. Shining Swarm notch into third for now. Crazy Cat's Eyes. Fans, you may want to cover your eyes on that one in the stadium. Off we go for the next set of four. Savage Speeders will hit the blocks first in lane number two. Thunderbolts get in front of them, but the Green Ducks put together a fine performance, leaving the Limers in the dust. And look at this push, how close it is to the record. That's past 90. And just keep that forward momentum going. No strength lost over the course of that push, and it's a 91.55. They do that again, and they've got the lead. Everybody changes around. Now Limers to the top side, Thunderbolts, Speeders, and the Ducks. Thunderbolts, their lead marble quick out of the gate, but a lot of separation between them. That leads to a terrible total. The Green Ducks will repeat as victors among the four. And this gets them out toward 84 by my eye. Unofficial. The Ducks got third in the friendly round in 2020 at block pushing. 175 5 5. They're getting ever closer. Now they'll be in the top lane. Who, who can spring a surprise here among the other three? Does anybody have the strength to do it? Getting this far into the runs. Green Ducks are going to inch it forward past 80. But I don't think that's going to be an improvement. Savage Speeders it might be. Down on lane four. With Thunderbolts and the Limers just struggling to put it together. As a team, I think that's more the issue rather than strength. So 175-5-5 with one run to go. The Green Ducks, that would put them provisionally into the silver. What do they have? Last time out. Oh, and I think they've expended it all. The Thunderbolts finally put together a wonderful launch past 80 with their four team members in that block. And look at the slow-mo replay here, keeping it fairly set and bouncing it off the walls just slightly. But that anchor hit, time to perfection, gets them past 81. Oh, almost to 82. That puts them at a 159.25. That's decent. And in fact, that is good enough for fifth. Green Ducks, second place in front of the Gliding Glaciers. Final four, Indigo Stars, oh, Rangers, Hazers, and the hot team of late, Team Momo. There's the first push going to shake out, and where else? Momo gets the win among the four. Doesn't mean much. 
They set the provisional mark at 80. Every one of them having a good bit of separation between marbles three and four. Seventy-six, six-five. At the top, down there to seventy-nine. It's a pretty big spread. Bottom lane. Had the lead coming into the push itself, and then it faltered, and Momo goes two for two. Shorter on this one, really, with the entire field. Look at how even those four anchors are. Just waiting to see what those three big boots in front of them could do. The Rangers get past 70. That should help them a bit. 22 5 0 for Momo. It's a 152.3. Remember that 159-ish was somewhere in fifth place, if memory serves me correct. So they have to improve here in their final two runs. Hazers decently quick out of the gate. Again, they're going to strike the blocks first and again come up dead last. The O-Rangers put together some wonderful teamwork. And that is flirting with 85 out there. Going to be just short of that mark. Yes, 84-40. It moves them up to a 156-45. They've got anything left, anything that they can muster. Any of these four, they're the final runners of this entire event. What's it going to be? Pretty poor showing, I think. <laughs> 70 will lead the four. It's not going to challenge for a medal. I don't think any of these four will. That last run being quite indicative of that. But a wonderful effort to improve when they saw the numbers that they had to beat. Look at how close the Rangers are going to get. 156 4 5. I think they're going to miss out on a top five finish. But you know who's not going to miss out? The Raspberry Racers. Top step of the podium, gold medal, and a Marble League record. That's a pretty good sweep coming out of event number eight. That's their first gold since 2020 hurdles, their first of the season as well. Green Ducks get the silver, Gliding Glaciers get the bronze. That's first silver since 2019. The Green Ducks back in the elimination race. Hazers, they have placed last in all three editions of block pushing. That is where they take that dubious distinction away from Crazy Cat's eyes. I'm sure their fans are happy about that mildly. They get a point out of it. But what does this do to the overall order? 25 points for the racers. It's not going to be enough to vault Team Momo. Everybody stays the same in the top three. Thunderbolt's up two, or Rangers up two. Hazers drop three, though, down into seven. Next up, the triathlon. Hey, before we go, a shout out from our patron, Tony. Happy birthday to Ellen. And Tony says, go O-Rangers. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time. The triathlon first appeared one season ago in the 2020 Marble League. Back then, the Hazers stood atop the podium in front of Team Momo and O-Rangers. Where do they stand after this one? We'll have to see. Interesting duality of fates on display in that medal table. Zero medals for the Minty Maniacs sitting in dead last. Zero medals for the Thunderbolts, for instance, who sit in fourth. This goes to show you how difficult the Marble League is. Hey, everybody. I'm Greg Woods. This is a tricky course that begins on the circuit as the local youth team, the pupils, here in Felinia. They line up on the top of the gate, and off they go, that split right off the starting line. Then you have this series of corners. You have to get the line right. Right-hander coming onto the sand now. Many different pathways that you can take from the sand. You also have to manage your speed because, as you can tell, hitting off those walls makes it very difficult to keep going. Then a drop into the water when you're most needing air. you got to hold it and roll down to the line 
and come across. This one should race much quicker than last year's triathlon, which was event number eight a season ago. Winning time in that one, 32-42, but obviously a very different course than what we see here inside of the stadium. As we get ready for the first run of these games in the triathlon. Individual marbles here. Foggy, Mallard, Minty Drizzle, and Shock get underway, and it's Minty Drizzle leading through the opening corners of the track. Close battle there, right behind with Shock as they come onto the sand. Those top two trying to stretch it. Foggy getting caught up on the walls and drops to last. Now Mallard moves into second place and takes the lead, it appears. Streaking down to the line, Minty Drizzle up top is gonna slow to a crawl. And the Green Ducks representative will move on. Mallard, the captain. Foggy from the Hazers did recover and finished just three tenths of a second back. Green ducks and water, aha. Rapidly in the meantime, competing in the first individual event since the Midnight Bay Grand Prix, where they podium along with Razzie. And it's a three marble battle for second place right now, as streaking off into the distance is Frost from the Gliding Glaciers. Momo. Closes up, oh, and look at this, a big switch coming down the sand, rapidly has the lead as they drop halfway through the water portion, a little bit left to go, and rapidly holds on, I guess caught up with the line there. Frost will take second and advance out of this second heat. Captain for Team Momo coming in last there. This is a little surprising for a team that has been on a tear of late. Glimmer from the Shining Swarm, you may notice a newcomer. And off we go down the circuit. Coco from the Chocolatiers had the lead until a strong wall hit gave it to Glimmer of the Shining Swarm. They trade back and forth, coming down the sand, and a big gap back that is closing as I say that from Origin of the Arrangers, who drops into second place, drafting in the water, moves to the right side, has the lead back to the left, slowing down. It's gonna be a photo finish, not that it will matter, because the top two will advance Glimmer officially gets the win between the two of them. Orangen, a tenth behind, and then a second back to the rest of the field. Glimmer, that's a strong debut. Now, coming up here, Limers, Cat's Eyes, Indigo Stars, and the Rojo Rollers are away, and it's Gulime holding the lead through the first left-hander. Really close draft back behind there for Blue Eye from Crazy Cat's Eyes and Bingo from Indigo Stars. Switching back and forth there with the Rojo Rollers, that's Rojo Trace. A clear lead for the Limers as they drop into the water. They will advance, but the battle is for second place. Who will have it? Oh, that's gonna be close, but the Crazy Cat's Eyes will, well, hold on a second. I'm being told that there is an incident. Oh, look at that. The Rojo Rollers got stranded on the sand the stewards are investigating, the referees going over and having a discussion. Lots of discussion here. Something gonna happen. Oh, and look at this. Blue Eye has been disqualified for pushing Rojo Trace off the course. The crazy Cat Size fans don't like this at all. This is a furor developing in the stadium. We've had limited replays thus far, but Crazy Cat's Eyes will finish dead last and get zero points out of this one if the result stands. It says current results. I'm not sure if those are official yet or if we're going to have an appeal or anything of the sort. In the meantime, we will move on to the semifinals. I guess once those go along, there's not much that Crazy Cat's Eyes can do. Bingo, Frost, Glimmer, and the captain of the Green Ducks, Ballard, are away, and it's the captain that holds a 5-10 length lead through the first few turns. The Green Ducks were strongest in the water, and they hope to finish in the top two here, but they have to navigate through the sand first. Gliding glaciers fall all the way to dead last. Good recovery here for the Ducks, who also lost the lead, and they hold it down the stretch. But this is a three-marble race. 
They will be passed at the line by Glimmer from the Shining Swarm. The debutante continues a strong run, and Mallard does advance by about two tenths in front of Bingo. And the Indigo Stars, it came down that close. I'm not sure the Shining Swarm were expecting to be in this position. Guline rapidly. Foggy and Orange, no captains this time. As we swing around with Foggy in the lead, losing it to the Savage Speeders rapidly. This right-hander sets you up very well for the Sand, or can set you up pretty poorly. Orangin comes up into second place, fights for the lead. A bump, they go into the water side by side. We need a better view than this. At the finish line, everybody's right there and rapidly will pip everyone. Foggy will advance, but four hundredths between transferring, Gulaim just misses out. Leads changing by the second here. People gathered around the water cooler are gonna have plenty to talk about. Bingo from the Indigo Stars just misses out on a top four, still gets good 11 points out of it. Gulaim in sixth, Orangin, the Arrangers in seventh, and Frost in eighth. Among those who did not survive, the semifinal. Four have advanced though. One will not medal. Where will the others shake out? It's time to go for gold in the triathlon. And we're rolling. Lee changes several times right out of the gate with Foggy, stretching it a huge margin over Mallard. The captain of the Green Ducks is closing up corner by corner as they enter the sand. Rapidly was strong here last time and starts to wheel them in ever so slightly. The Green Ducks into the water first, but slow down rapidly and Foggy are right there beside him and passing them. Foggy trying to hold on, drifting to the near side and I don't think they held on. Rapidly may have stolen gold. Rapidly gets it by nine hundredths of a second. Gold for the Savage Speeders, silver and maybe a mild heartbreak for the Green Ducks and Foggy the from the Hazers, Hazers captures bronze. So many water events that we have seen come right down to the very last roll, and this was no exception. Foggy had entered the water looking so strong, but instead of staying right down the middle, a lot of lateral movement tailed off at the end and rapidly took that perfect line down the middle. The Green Ducks trying to pull the draft off of them as best they could. And just like that, the Savage Speeders, who finished seventh with Rapidly in this event last season, go several better and get the gold glimmer from the Shining Swarm, making a debut and, I guess, feast or famine in that one. <laughs> the best time and the worst time of the lot, all going to that same marble. Savage Speeders, first team to win two golds this season. Rapidly, that is the fourth gold the career. Green Ducks up four spots into fourth. The top three remain the same, but those margins have shrunk. Quick shout out from our patron Emma Case. Happy birthday, Aaron. Go Lime. Emma and Sydney love you. Well, we thank you so much for watching. Catch your breath as we get ready for the showdown. The origins of the steeplechase go back more than 100 years overseas in Ireland. But this adaptation is going to be slightly different here inside the home of the crazy cat's eyes. Hey, everybody. I'm Greg Woods. Team Momo leads the way, but those margins have gotten a bit closer, just a seven-point lead up at the top. Back in 2017, when we ran this event, the top four teams back then in Steeplechase were the top four teams overall. Not really in that order, but still. Will the top four perform well here? We'll have to see. As the... Oh... My, there's already a stoppage back there. We've got somebody who got caught at the beginning, but this is a great representation because the times are the sum of the three best marbles plus whatever penalties they serve. So you have to clear those gates. Make sure that you make it down the order. The blue pupils will serve as the event records. This is a new course as we get things going with the Rojo Rollers. Oh, and one goes to the near side. Veered off, that is gonna be a penalty. I think there was another bump farther down below. And that is a 23-6-7. Here was the first obstacle getting caught and immediately 
tumbling to the side. If you dislodge those sticks over the steeple, that does get you a penalty. Minty Maniacs now. Top three are stringing out a little bit. They gotta bunch it up. Oh, there's a bump farther down. And that's gonna be a penalty for them. 23-9-0 for the Minty Maniacs. A team sitting in 15th in the standings. They're yet to medal. Limers coming up now, just one spot ahead of the Minty Maniacs in the overall standings. And they've got a nice tight bunch formation here, but it comes undone over the speed boost. It's the top three though, and that should help. Oh, two penalties though, 23-6-8. 100th off of the Rojo Rollers leading time. Crazy Cat's Eyes up now for the home team. Just 13th in the standings. They've got to get going. You notice we're working in reverse championship order. Oh, there's two that are dislodged as they work their way down the course. Three, actually. That's a 23-7-4. Those top four teams, by the way, back in 2017. In the order they finished, Savage Speeders, Mellow Yellow, Midnight Wisps, and the Orangers. Limers were down an eighth. Gliding Glaciers team that was not in the running back then, just like Crazy Cat's Eyes, are off now. Over the speed boost, they keep it in the middle. I think they dislodged that second to last stick. Oh, three penalty seconds added on. 24-6-9 puts them in fifth. Now Mellow Yellow, one of those top three teams from 2017. Second place back then. They've already lost one marble way back there. It's the top three times, though, that do count. Oh, and they've done it! That is a new record, which, you know, was not that long lived anyway. But more importantly, they go to the top of the standings. 21-7-6. That beats the Rojo Rollers time of 23-6-7. Shining Swarm coming up now. 10th place team. Thus far in the standings, oh, you heard that impact. You saw the second one. I think there have been more. There goes one at the back. Oh, that run is falling away from them. The farther down they come, four penalty seconds added and a seventh place in run seven. That tells you all you need to know. Indigo Stars, keeping it in the middle here. Have they stayed clean? No, that second to last steeple has really complicated a lot of runs, but they keep it tidy enough with a 23-2-9 to move into second place. Provisionally, silver medalists with half the field yet to go. Taking a look at the current standings, only one team has gotten away with just a single penalty, and that is the team in first place. They actually could have gotten another one, and they still would have the lead. That's how strong that performance was. Chalk the Tears. They've won a gold in this Marble League once before. Earlier in this season, are they going to be able to do it again in this event? Doesn't look like it. Four penalty points. Second to last they come. Thunderbolts, a team that has not meddled yet. Separation with the lead marble. Now the second one passes. I think we have one get stuck farther up the course. Oh, it's not a bad time. 23-5-0 with those two penalty points. Oh, those seconds added. No, here, there's where it got caught. That otherwise would have been a great run. The Rangers, former silver medalists earlier in this Marble League. They bunch way up. That lead marble slows way down also. Oh, and just one penalty second added. The Rangers go into second place. There is where it became dislodged. Otherwise, they kept it clean over the speed boost and that tricky penultimate jump before coming down across the line. And notching in just behind Mellow Yellow, Rojo Rollers are displaced to bronze. 12 of 16 brings us the Hazers. Off they go. Oh, and this is getting well out of sorts. One has been lost. They're hitting all of the steeples coming down the run. Not good. Four penalty seconds. 
Hazers are in last. A team that sits fifth in the standings. They've won all three colors of medals thus far in the Marble League. And somebody stranded haplessly up the course and a lot of dislodged sticks. It's not working for them. The Rangers join in. They wouldn't have captured gold had they eliminated that penalty point. They still would have been trailing Mellow Yellow, but just barely. Green Ducks are off now, our fourth place team who jumped four spots after the last event. They keep everybody bunched up. Is that too much chaos? Did they knock any sticks down? They did, two of them, but it's good enough provisionally for silver. Green Ducks knock the O-Rangers down. Where was their struggle? Oh, it might have been right there. A little tough to tell with the motion blur. They did impact that last one. I don't know if it was dislodged. The Quack attacked that course well. Savage speeders now as we get into the final three. Third place in the standings and of course our winners at the steeplechase back in 2017. One has already finished. They're going to get all four to finish, but what is the time? That was a large gap from first to second. And look at the top time, 7.06. That's half a second off some of the best runs. Now the Raspberry Racers. This guarantees that Mellow Yellow will get a medal. Raspberry Racers, their fourth marble struggling. Top three, trying to bunch it up across the line. Fifth. That gives a stay for Mellow Yellow once more. They are guaranteed no worse than silver, but can Momo dethrone them? Mellow Yellow holding the lead. Will it stay that way? Yes, it will. Mellow Yellow have one goal. Congratulations to the Arrangers, the Green Ducks, and the gold medalists. Green Ducks get the silver and O'Rangers the bronze. Gonna go back to 2019 in the five meter sprint. The last time we saw Mellow Yellow stand atop the Marble League podium. Green Ducks in the meantime, that is their third straight silver. I mentioned they jumped four spots after the last event. That's gonna help them a lot in this one. Here was the gold medal winning run from the Mellow Yellow team. All four finished. All four ran pretty good time, it's only the top three that count. And it did well to get them a gold and 25 points for the standings. Just two teams only coming away with one penalty second. Look at the Green Ducks, they had two of them and still managed silver. What does this do to our overall standings? Shakes things up just a little bit. Only in the mid-pack, though, the Green Ducks stay where they are, but look at up top. A two-point difference between Momo and the Raspberry Racers. Patreon message out there. Hope everyone's having a great 2021. Let's go crazy cat's eyes from Michigan, USA. Also a reminder, make sure you pick your final perks if you are part of the in-demand Indiegogo campaign. The link will be in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. We hope to see you at the next event, The Sand Moguls. Event 11 in the 2021 Marble League takes us outdoors for an event that you have to go back just a year ago to find its inclusion in the last Marble League. Otherwise, two years prior to that was the first time that the Sand Moguls have appeared on the schedule. Crazy Cat's Eye is opting to hold this event in the Cat's Dunes outside of that wonderful stadium. As we see the overall standings, two points separating our top two but Savage Speeders and Green Ducks and several others are still within striking distance. I don't think we've had anybody statistically eliminated yet. But that door could be closing relatively soon if some of the teams, especially at the bottom, don't get things going in time. And we are rolling for this one. You see several of the competitors in this one. Rojo Trace and Blue Eye, I guess kind of making amends thus far after that incident in the triathlon. We'll see how well they behave Coming down the course here, it is Mellow Yellow out in front with their captain. Yellow who gets passed right now by the Green Ducks. Ducky briefly tasted the lead, but now the O'Rangers getting in that draft, bumping over the sand. Look at him bounding off of the wall. It's a four marble race thus far. 
every time you stick on the edge like that, you risk shooting off the course. How far down are we? How long is this course? We'll have to see. Green Ducks make a nice move in front of the Shining Swarm, who immediately counter and bring it right back and decide, I'm not going to get any closer than I have to. Who was that? That was Mellow Yellow shooting on by like they were fired from a cannon. That lead stretching only briefly. Crazy Cat's Eyes now in second place, just a tenth behind as they cross the line. As we take a look at the finish line cam here, oh, that was close. Shiny passing Rosie right before the line. That's huge because that means Momo will have a chance to grow their lead in the standings. And goodness knows they're going to need it with as close as things are here in the Marble League. So now we have a general idea of how long this course is. Lightning of the Thunderbolts. A practice race with Mo before this event. They ate some dumplings from what I hear. <laughs> Let's see if any of that uh, worked to their advantage. Several of these competitors do get some practice runs in. And look at this nice traverse around the outside for the Thunderbolts to take the lead. That's Lightning. Minty Maniacs in second place. Lighting Glaciers, Chocolatiers. Hazers farther on back in fifth in front of the Savage Speeders. Indigo Stars get by the Limers who are falling back. And now Indigo Stars jumble backwards to last place. Thunderbolts up front holding on in this very different iteration of the Sand Moguls than what we have seen before. It is a very bumpy course by design. Bonbon bon from the Chocolatiers. Getting ever closer to Thunderbolts up front. They finally make their move around the outside. It's a little bit of cat and mouse right there. Am I going to pass you? No, I'm going to hold back. You don't have to exert yourself yet. Boom! Shoot on by when they least expect it. Not quite a break check. There's the finish line already. Gliding Glaciers will get the second transfer spot. Indigo Stars and Thunderbolts will round out the top four with that little flourish at the end. Leaping over the line in celebration of advancement. So the back eight will be classified based on their finishing time. Minty Flav, the captain of the Minty Maniacs, just missing out. Team Momo, the only team that is in the top five in the current standings, by my eye, to advance to the final. That is huge for them. Regardless of where they finish, the points haul is going to be nice. It looks like there's a bug on the track, so we're going to have a small delay here. This just adds to the tension as they wait in the block, shoulder to shoulder with the competitors who seek to deny them possible medals. Now we're ready to go again. Who among them will get the gold, the silver, and the bronze? We are rolling away, and who will strike in the Sand Moguls? Thus far, it's Crazy Cat's Eyes out in front to a raucous cheer from the crowd. Mellow Yellow is going to get passed by Momo on the outside there. Shining Swarm also getting by. They fall back into fourth. Indigo Stars are down to fifth. Gliding Glaciers, Thunderbolts, and the Chocolatiers getting caught up on the wall there is the Crazy Cat's Eyes. They lose that lead that they had fought so hard to build. Mellow Yellow in second place around the outside into the lead. That's a great move. Getting caught up on the wall. Indigo Stars now. Here comes Crazy Cat's Eyes back with some speed. A nice little shuffle juke step to take P1 for now. Streaking down toward the finish line. Here comes Mellow Yellow around the outside. Are they going to be able to hold it? Indigo Stars want some opportunities to pass for the lead, but they're not going to get it here. Building up that speed at the end. This is going to be very close. Mellow Yellow will hold on for gold. Back to back for the first time in their career. And the captain of Mellow Yellow proving that they deserve that spot. That's the third individual gold medal for Yellow. Past winners of this event, Midnight Wisps in 2018, Oceanics in 2020, and now Mellow Yellow. Indigo Stars get the silver, that's Gogo's first ever individual medal. And Bonbon bon gets the bronze. And here was the one of several passes for the lead. They traded multiple times down this course. It's a little bit like an Omnium or uh, other track cycling events where you hold back when you choose to make your move. Could end up making all the difference between gold and not meddling. Bonbon bon continues to dominate the sand. Third, fourth, second, and second 
in the last four outdoor sand events in which Bon Bon has competed. What does that do to the overall standings here? Well, Team Momo does stretch the lead now. Robo Trace back there at the bottom, just one point in two events. They are nine points behind that second to last Minty Maniacs. Shout out from our Patreon, Bailey, wishing a very happy birthday to Kevin. Bailey says, go Savage Speeders. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. We hope you're ready to take the plunge with us as diving makes its return to the Marble League for the first time since 2016. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods, welcome. This is an event that back in 2016 was won by Mellow Yellow, which, oh by the way, have just happened to win the last two events in this year's Marble League. Up three spots to third place in the overall standings. Boy, if there's a time to peak, it's getting into that period right now. If you're wondering how this event works, you see the bullseyes down in the bottom of the tank. Obviously in diving, synchronicity is a big part of it, but it's where you land on that bullseye that makes a difference for your score. Obviously, if you're really out of sync, you're gonna lose points regardless. But if you land in the white, that's worth one point, all the way up to five points if you land in the middle. You'll see it color-coded down there in the example run from the yellow pupils who put up not a bad score, just slightly off on their sink. But in this one, you're diving, not really sinking. Don't let that confuse you. Regardless, as we get ready here, Mellow Yellow won that event in 2016. Oceanics were second back then, and Limers were third. This team, eighth. Down they come, and they spread out wide. This will be a good view as they drop on in. Nobody terribly close to the bullseye. Boy, they really have to slow it down there. Three of them. Boy, they were in sync the whole way. Slightly out of position on that second marble from the top. But you can see, mostly blues, which get them two points. Minty Maniacs. They drop on through a high bounce from that third marble. And as they come on in, several of them, I think, missed the, at least one of them missed the white altogether. This is the better view for it. And a zero down there, 4.76. Quarter of a point out of sync. Here are those bronze medalists. That was their very first Marble League medal ever back then. And that was an okay entry. Ooh, and just a little bit off. Just two one-pointers out there. 0.16 the deduction for being slightly out of sync. But overall, a respectable result. Here are the gliding glaciers, and boy, their entry point and a couple of the contact look pretty good. Yes, they've got a bullseye from that third marble. It would be second from the top as we look at it. Also a three-pointer in there, so 10.84 is the mark to beat from the Gliding Glaciers. Crazy cat's eyes up now. And that looked very in sync coming through and good positioning landing on the bullseyes as well. Oh, they were a bit off where? Ah, you can see those bottom two marbles from our view getting ever so close together in midair. Three threes on the board. These judges are holding nothing back. They expect perfection here. They want everybody to stay roughly equidistant apart in the air. Oh, and look at this, a 12.76. And that breaks the old record, gotta go back a ways, held by the Purple Rockets, a team that comes from the Stardust Classic, if you're a student of history of the sport, with Team Galactic and the Solar Flares. Wow. Well, there you go. And that was also a pretty good jump, at least by those couple of camera angles. Ooh, 11.60, it is just shy. Big deduction though. You can see them getting out of sorts and especially where they finish once they're in the water there. That can sometimes be indicative of the path that they took through the air, or in some cases through the water. Chocolatiers come in now and they were splayed all over the place by the time they hit the bullseyes. They were very synchronized entering the water, just slightly out of a line. But once they actually got into the water, that's where things started to unravel a little bit for them. So Shining Swarm 
have the lead with a Marble League record 12.76, and that's with nearly a quarter of a point deduction. That is saying something. This is really a sport that overloads the mind in a lot of ways. Not only do you have the bounce there and the entry into the water, then you have to quickly get your bearings about you and seek out those targets on the bottom of the tank. You miss any one of those steps like the O'Rangers have here. They focused a bit too much on being in sync and lost it by the time they got down to the targets. Two goose eggs on the board. Thunderbolts come through now in run 10 of 16. No heats, you get one attempt, and it better be a good one. Oh, they were well off. In fact, they had a collision after the water entry point for those top two. And that is going to earn them no brownie points with their coach either. Indigo Stars up now. That was not a bad entry. Not the best landing, though. You can see them going in several different directions. Off the bounce, they're in a decent line there, and then they start to come together. The deduction not terrible for them. Problems were on the landing. Green Ducks now. What can they do? It's Green Ducks in a water event. The expectations are pretty high. Oh, but the score is not. 7.80. Highest that they got was a three on the bullseyes and then two tenths deduction on the synchronicity. So as we currently stand with just four to go, it's Shining Swarm, Hazers, and then Gliding Glaciers. So got to get above 10.84 if you hope to crack the podium and get a medal. Some of these teams that go very late have to be wondering what the different strategies are because it's so much of this comes down to practice. There's very little that you can actually do once you are performing. All of the hours and hours of diving back and forth and having your technique watched and filmed sometimes all comes down to this. Mellow Yellow. Three to go. Our former diving gold medalist. What do they do here? That looked like a good landing. Where does it shake out? Oh, 11.8. It puts them into second place. Mellow Yellow, even with that two-tenths deduction, did get a bullseye and two threes as well. So now, Shining Swarm are going to be guaranteed a medal with just two runners left. And Raspberry Racers can't get it done. So it's going to be no worse than Silver for the Shining Swarm. Mellow Yellow can get Bronze at worst. What can Team Momo do? A team that came in sixth back in 2016. Oh, and that did not look like a coordinated landing at all. Onto the targets. A one and a zero puts them in 12th. And it puts the gold medal squarely on the dive of the Shining Swarm. They are your gold medalists. That is the Shining Swarm's second ever Marble League gold. Here's how they got it done. Good recovery. When they were just starting to get a little out of sync off the bounce, they recovered nicely, entered the water cleanly. They're also looking at that level of splash sometimes too. And by gosh, Mellow Yellow on the podium as well. They're, they're, that's practically their home now. They're, they're loving that. <laughs> they're comfortable as can be. And hey, another bronze and excelling in a water event are the Hazers. Something we're also still getting used to with all of this. But hey, what a nice return to the Marble League this was. The 12.76 cleared the field easily for the Shining Swarm. Mellow Yellow get the silver, and Hazers, the bronze, Gliding Glaciers, just off the podium. They're in fourth. How does this shake things around a bit? And we've got a new leader in the championship. Perhaps unsurprisingly, given their performance of late, Mellow Yellow vaults to the top three clear of Momo, 
Raspberry Racers another three back, then it's the Green Ducks up into fourth. Next up, the Elimination Race as we head down in the final few events of the 2021 Marble League. The Elimination Race represents one of the most difficult events in all of the Marble League. Now, unlike in 2019, the format for this year's will feature 16 teams on course at once, with the final one crossing the finish line to be eliminated. Of course, there will be obstacles on the way, some twists and turns throughout, and we see a couple from the last time that we had this event, Rezzy, Quacky, and Red Eye are our defending podium finishers the last time out. This time the pupils will head down and show us the way. Through the honeycomb they go, tripping several different trap marbles, trying to stay off the walls. And oh, you see those large ball bearings that can create some chaos and perhaps some bruises too by the time you reach the bottom of this course. Now, of course, because this is an elimination race and there are 16 teams, well, you have to assume that means a lot of rounds. And because it's the same marbles in each round, this is going to be interesting. A belated hello, everybody. I'm Greg Woods. Thank you so much for watching as the wave dances across the stadium here in the home of the crazy cat's eyes. Everybody lined up side by side, some of them taking a hard hit on the side of the wall back there. And remember, you've got to try not to be last. And I think that distinction was going to the Limers for a while, but things are changing very quickly. Hazers and Indigo Stars come across first. Who's going to be last? It is Momo. Now that is interesting because Team Momo have been trending decently well. Unfortunately, it wasn't all that close for him. And so Mimo is gone. Now everybody gets taken back up to the top of this course. No time for a breather, and we are off again. It is Yellup in dead last here for Mellow Yellow. They've got to get going. Can they get by the Minty Maniacs, who are dancing tantalizingly close ahead of them? It's not going to happen. Mellow Yellow, they are done. Yellup is eliminated. What happened there? The top two teams in the championship standings are the first two that are gone from the competition. Now that opens the door wide for any number of teams to take up that mantle. Oh, and it's the Rangers who fall to dead last right now, but they're not so far back. Who was that that got caught up on the wall there? Was that the Limers? I think they are having some trouble getting going here. Oh, who's going to come across? It will be the Limers. Yep, they weren't able to advance. The well, Rangers were back there. The Limers had been caught up on the wall, but they kept going. You'd almost need to see a replay from higher up. Look at the speed difference also. Trying to catch the old Rangers coming across the line, but Slime Lime couldn't do it. The Rangers just get ahead. It was Mandarin who now leads the field heading down this time and is not going to try to risk elimination at all. It's the Hazers, I believe, who are in last. Unless there's another mar marble farther back up the course. Oh, look at the speed difference there also coming across the line. Instead, it's going to be the Rojo Rollers who will go no further. That was a wonderful recovery by the Hazers. Misty picking up speed in the bottom part of this course, getting by those red marbles, those bearings, the trap doors that fall down in front of you and can really add to your time. Now for a while the Gliding Glaciers were in last place, but that is switching back and forth. Is that the Shining Swarm all the way back there? Wouldn't be surprised if at some point here we end up seeing several DNFs. And that could mean all the difference between elimination and advancement. But for right now, it's the Shining Swarm that are on the cutting table. Sterling will not make it across in time and will be out. That line up at the top getting a little smaller each time we do this. The Gliding Glaciers and the Thunderbolts are back there for last place. Thunderbolts get caught up on the wall briefly, and now they get by the crazy cat's eyes. But look at this gaggle up there on the left. And who will it be? Oh, I thought it was going to be the Rangers, and they just sneak by the Gliding Glaciers. This is close down here at the end with these dislodged pieces of honeycomb. 
Watch them as they come in. There are the old Rangers. Ooh, ooh, that was close. You also notice the marbles getting much more exhausted every time we come up the course here. That's why you're also seeing more mistakes. More of these bearings are being dislodged, the trap doors. Oh, chocolatiers, I think we're up there a little bit. Have they recovered? It's a little tough to tell with all of the marbles flashing back and forth. It is the chocolatiers who get in the top 10, but that is all the farther they will go. Several teams right now have to be, as they fight through the exhaustion, thinking about the opening at the top of the standings right now. But the top two teams eliminated first, the points differential is going to be huge depending on where you finish. It's the Green Ducks who are back of the pack right now, and they're losing ground as they go. I thought they'd be able to catch the Raspberry Racers, and they still might be able to, depending on how things go in the bottom part of this course. Oh, that was an impact between them, I think. And it shot the Raspberry Racers forward. If we see it at the end here, there they come, right there. They actually get by Crazy Cat's Eyes, who had stalled at the line. But the Green Ducks and Quacky, their run is done. Look at the number of impacts. The farther down that course you get. Six of the eight returning competitors in this event from 2019 are still alive right now. Who will be next to go with the Raspberry Racers trying to stave that off? They need to get by the Minty Maniacs, and they're right together down on the course. They're a few lengths apart, and now the Raspberry Racers fall back behind. Oh, look at all the impacts down here. A chase to the line. It's not going to happen. Rezzy, one of the podium finishers, is done, but the way that the math's looking like right now, the Raspberry Racers may have done just enough to take over the championship lead, at least provisionally. Getting down to the final few runs. Minty Maniacs lead the field. It's the Savage Speeders who are dead last fighting with, I think that's the Hazers back there. Hazers get by the O'Rangers. Crazy Cat's Eyes also leave them in the dust. The O'Rangers are trying to not trail off the back too far, but I don't think they're in danger because there, in another couple of breaths, are the Savage Speeders. Wizzy. Can't live up to the name on that one. Ooh, hitting that gray honeycomb square on. Not sure that would have made any difference in passing other marbles. But as it is, we are down to the final six. Start becoming oh so important. Crazy Cat's Eyes are lagging behind right now. The Arrangers are with them, but a few lengths up ahead. Oh, and it's only getting worse for the Crazy Cat's Eyes, the home team. The, ch the crowd trying to will them on. Is it going to work? Yes, it does. They get by the Arrangers. Arrangers, I think, briefly got caught up on that large ball bearing when they tripped it. Oh, and getting a little assist from some of the smaller ball bearings shooting Crazy Cat's Eyes across the finish line. Boy, that is a good recovery, but do they have enough in the tank to keep it going? Chests heaving right now. Minty Maniacs were in last. Now they get in front. Crazy Cat's Eyes were in last, and now they have recovered as well. Things are changing constantly. It's Minty Maniacs and Crazy Cat's Eyes right now, trying to stay off that last spot. Minty Maniacs have fallen behind and are done. Goodbye, Minty Maniacs. Oh, and look at that. Diego getting launched onto the side of the course by the big ball bearing. It was able to keep going. Oh, my. Look at how high up. Oh, my gosh. Thankfully, there was a way out down that slip road. Otherwise, we go stars. That would have been disastrous. Just a couple of runs from deciding the podium and medal positions. Off they come in round 13. Can you believe it? Everybody really slow this time. Fatigue is playing a huge part in this. Crazy Cat Size fell to last. Now shoulder out of the way and are able to keep going. Indigo Stars are caught. The ball bearing dislodges them, but it's not going to be enough. Indigo Stars have finished fourth with Diego 
for the second time. Sometimes history doesn't just rhyme, it repeats itself. But hey, one thing that we have broken the curse of history here, at least for this Marble League, is the Thunderbolts are guaranteed a medal. It's been astounding that they've climbed up the order as far as they have without capturing a single medal yet. So this race will decide the bronze. Crazy Cat's Eyes, who have recovered in so many of these races after being so far off the back, can they do it again? Oh, they came oh so close to the hazers there. They do get by, and then they lose it again. Shoulder to the side, Crazy Cat's Eyes will not just advance, they'll win this heat. Thunderbolts will get the bronze, but what willpower being shown by the Crazy Cat's Eyes? Constantly, they have faced the specter of elimination, only to come out ahead of it. And now, they will be fighting for the silver or the gold. This, I assume, will be the last race. The winner of this wins it all. Hazers and Crazy Cat's Eyes, step for step so far. Crazy Cat's Eyes, they move to the left. Hazers were there to block them. They begin to stretch that lead, do the Hazers, if they can keep it off the wall. But here comes that patented late speed that we've seen in so many runs from the Crazy Cat's Eyes. Are they gonna be able to get by the Hazers? No! Hazers win the event. Crazy Cat's Eyes get silver, but that is still enough to get a huge reaction from this crowd, a well-deserved ovation, and some even more deserved rest. These top two, I don't know how they had enough to keep going, but I guess once you are facing a possible gold medal, you get that. That's their second medal, by the way, Crazy Cat's Eyes, in the elimination race, and their second medal of this Marble League. Misty from the Hazers, congratulations. The third double gold medalist behind Minty Fresh and Starry. I mentioned Red Eye and of course Bolt up there as well. The first medal for the Thunderbolts this season. A test of strategy, a test of willpower, a test of speed and durability in many cases. That has led to Misty from the Hazers, capturing gold and 25 points. Red Eye gets the silver, Bolt gets the bronze. But with the top two in the championship being eliminated so early, what does this do to the overall standings? Raspberry Racers have done enough by a single point. 141 to 140, Momo falls to third, Hazers are up five spots into fourth. Oh boy, that has shaken up the order tremendously. Next up, the Sand Rally in what has already been a remarkable Marble League. We hope you'll stay with us. One of the most popular events in Marble League history brings us to event 14 here in 2021, the Sand Rally. Hey everybody. I'm Greg Woods, as we head outside of the stadium this time for an event that has been run nearly every single Marble League since 2016. It's been sand, it's been dirt, it's been snow, but today we are back on the sand where conditions are not too bad by the look of things. Pupils will not be testing it out, however, because they are off training for another event and we're old hat at this. And we've got a slight delay here. You can see an insect on the starting gate. We want to make sure everybody is safe, and that is cleared out. We mean that for both marbles and insects alike. You can see maybe a slight bit of moisture down in the sand a little ways. That might help. A lot of former medalists in the rally. In this heat, Momo Momo, Razzie, Rojo Uno, Clementon, and Yelly. In this heat, and they have appeared on the podium, be it in the actual Marble League, or the Friendly, or the Qualifiers, or the Showdowns, or the Practices, or any number of times that we have run this event, and down they come. It is Razzie leading the way. The captain of the Raspberry Racers, followed closely by Clementon from the Orangers, who gets by, heading into that right-hander. They snake around as the Shining Swarm begins to make a move, and gets up into second place. Pressure coming from behind Raspberry Racers by Crazy Cat's Eyes, and they can't hold Blue Eye back very long. 
Blue Eye now falls back a couple of spots, comes back returning in fourth. Green Ducks in fifth, Mellow Yellow, Rojo Uno down in seventh, and Momo Momo trailing the field just two lengths back of that dark red marble. It's the O'Rangers now up front with Clementon as we take a look. And it's a four marble race. They're all separated by just a couple of lengths of the Shining Swarm. Get on by. Speed starting to fall away from the O'Rangers, who are now back in fourth place. It's Razzie up into second, trailing the Shining Swarm's shimmer. Crazy cat's eyes. Ooh, they just had a huge moment. They went from third back to fifth almost instantaneously. And now they're back on it. High on the wall that time. The O'Rangers threatening to lose a couple of more spots. This time to Mellow Yellow and the Green Ducks behind them. And they do. Shining Swarm holding the lead. This is heat number one as we get down into the final straights of this course. Just the first heat, remember. But it helps if you finish well and have a little bit of energy left in the tank. It will be Shining Swarm coming across in front of Razzy and Clementon. Crazy Cat's Eyes with Blue Eye get fourth, but it's Shimmer pacing the field. Seven tenths clear. Here in heat number one, the top four will advance. Ballard, Yelly, Rojo Uno, and Momo Momo, they go no further. The Green Duck's getting some air coming over the finish line. Actually, we're hearing that Rojo Cerro, the Rojo Rollers coach, is being called into the manager's office. Another poor performance, and who dare I say, might that be the end of the road? Rojo Cerro. All right, coming up next now, Bon Bon, the Sand Wizard, Indy, the practice race winner, Thunder, Alpine, several others. Seems like a lot of teams are putting their strongest athletes into this one. You have to wonder, for those who decided not to, that was the right choice. They're stacking the competition heavy in this one. Maybe they're looking down the road for those who didn't put their top runners in, and they're thinking saving them for future events. I'm not really sure, but it's Gulime up front for the Limers as we streak down the course for the second time. Velocity from the Savage Speeders narrowly in front of the Gliding Glacier's Captain Alpine. Savage Speeders closing up two lengths around the outside. That was a bold move with some contact, both from Gulime and the wall on that one. Gliding Glaciers back in third. Thunderbolts, who finally have a medal now. That's been the talk of the water cooler since our last event with Thunder, their captain, in the lineup, but has some work to do here. Fourth, just narrowly trying to get by the Gliding Glaciers. Farther back, Indigo Stars trail the field entirely. Hazers in front of them, Minty Maniacs, in sixth. Gliding Glaciers move up into second place. Alpine is going to try to get up there with Velocity, who has stretched the lead three quarters of the way through this course in the second heat. Good move around the outside there. Thunderbolts, oh, high on the wall there. That was nearly a disaster for the Minty Maniacs. They kept it together, however, and hold it in front of Chocolatier's Bon Bon. Ooh, Chocolatier's bumping up against the Thunderbolts. Finish line nearly inside. It has to be for the Savage Speeders. That lead has come down. They can coast across the line because look at that enormous gap. Back to third place. Oh, that was a race for the transfer spot. I'm hearing it's going to be a photo finish between Thunder and Minty Fresh. I couldn't really tell from that camera angle, but look at this gap. That's huge. Third place. Not in doubt. Oh, I think the Thunderbolts may have done it. Yes, they did. Just barely. By not even a quarter of a length. All three medalists from the practice round are in the bottom five. That is interesting as we see that ninth through 16th. And we get ready for the final. We have just three captains among them. Perhaps showing that maybe that strategy was not the wisest. Down they come for the final time to decide the medals here in event 14. And once again, it's the Thunderbolts and the O'Rangers we're out in front, O'Rangers dueling back and forth, slicing side to side. Watch for Savage Speeders, though. Velocity is right there. Top three, top four now are all right up against each other. In fact, contact sends several of them tumbling backwards. The Gliding Glaciers move into last place as a result. Savage Speeders and now the Crazy Cat's Eyes are right behind him. The Cats have been trending well with a medal in the last event. Can they do it again this time? Limers back in third, Thunderbolts. Gliding Glaciers have recovered nicely up to fourth. Make that third. Oh, contact there with the wall. Things are changing by the instant. We're already halfway down this course. Savage Speeders are once again out in front. 
and holding this lead. The Rangers had been up there, and now they are in last. Nice draft here by Crazy Cat's Eyes. This was a spot on the track that we saw some overtaking before, and this time it's going to be done by the Savage Speeders. Oh, some competitors almost flying off the course on that turn. They do get settled back, and it's the Cats who are out in front. Blue Eye leads everybody. Needs some speed. Here it comes from the Shining Swarm. Nice counter on that one. But the rest of the field is trying to mount an attack. Does anybody have something? Blue Eye holding on. Shining Swarm will finish second. Crazy Cat Size get the gold. And a four-way photo finish for second place. The roars from the stadium can be heard all the way over to the Sand Hill. Man, Shimmer just dodging an insect there. Shining Swarm making an advancement with Shimmer. Apparently Rojo Oro has been called into the manager's office as well, perhaps to replace Rojo Cerro as the... Oh, look at this. Three of them airborne. And Shimmer holds on behind Alpine. By one hundredth of a second between second and third, we now have our podium finish. Well, wasn't that message absolutely prescient up there? This was victory for the Cats. Blue Eye getting the win, third Marble League medal, and second gold of the year for the home team. For Alpine and Shimmer, that's their first medals, silver and bronze respectively for them. Well, Crazy Cat's Eyes are trending well. They've never medaled in this event. Never gold medaled in this event, I should say, but Blue Eye got silver in the friendly round. As we look at the standings, what has it done to the top of the order? Crazy Cat's Eyes are up six spots into third. We now have a few more eliminated that can't finish in the top three. Nobody that can't win the Marble League yet. And we'll see if a new coach helps the Rojo Rollers. In the meantime, we'll see you next time for football. The beautiful game sets up a tantalizing finish to determine the champion of the Marble League. With just a couple of events left, all eyes turn to football here inside of the stadium. Hey everybody. I'm Greg Woods. This is reminiscent of fields that we've done in years past, with those magnetic goalies trying to capture what they can to stop those soccer balls from making their way into the goals. Now, this is a really interesting setup. I know it just flashed on your screen briefly, but only three teams have been eliminated out of contention even to finish on the podium thus far. Everybody above them, 13 of them in fact, can still win the Marble League. That is just stunning to think about. As we see a demonstration for how this event will be run, I am just massively interested in how this is gonna go. If you can't tell, sitting in my comfy chair there. <laughs> the Raspberry Racers and the Rojo Rollers come out now, and we get our first look at these two teams, and we do have a goal on the far side. It does get past the Raspberry Racers, and the Rojo Rollers. You may recall in the previous event, their head coach fired. See how new management goes in this event. We get one on the left side. Oh, one trip was in on the right, just behind the goalie for the Rojo Rollers. But I believe it's just one goal apiece here in the second half. And that means a two to one victory for the Rojo Rollers and their new coach. Shining Swarm now and the Green Ducks. Down they come, and this I think is going to have a wash here. Oh, late goal saved by the Green Ducks. Oh, oh, that was Goose eyeing it all the way in and nabbed it before it made its way in the net. Score was in the second half. Will that change by the end? Watch on the far side. Oh, that's close. And no, we have stayed knotted. Green sheets abound. Let's see what we can do to decide a winner here in extra time. And they come one more time. Goal pitched to the, just to the right there and the Shining Swarm try it and they can't get it to work. We're gonna do it again. We do have a goal on the far side. It gets past Goose. 
And I don't think one was scored on the near side. No, it was not. Actual players from the team do not count. One football makes its way in, and the Shining Swarm will advance. Thunderbolts and the O-Rangers now. This is also going to be a wash in the first half. The two teams that are having different fortunes here in the Marble League. Second half goal does get past the Thunderbolts, and the O-Rangers will move on. The Rangers sitting down in 13th. The Thunderbolts all the way up in 4th. Quite a points differential between them, but not in this match. 1-0 makes all the difference. Savage Speeders now and the Chocolatiers. The Speeders are fifth ranked team thus far in the Marble League, but they're gonna give up a couple of goals here. Maybe just one got by, let's see in the slow-mo. One of their players went, oh, just streaked right by the goalie. On the other side, one hit the post for the Chocolatiers. What do they do this time? I believe Savage Speeders have given up another, 2-0. Oh, the speeders just couldn't get anything together there. Look at the formation, the late charge. They actually knocked a couple of their own shots awry. Disappointment. The Savage Speeders are ripe with upsets right now, too. Mellow Yellow and the Minty Maniacs. They come through. Mellow Yellow gives up a goal, as does Minty Maniacs. What happened here? Oh, it's an own goal. Oh, for the Minty Maniacs. That is disappointing. Now on the other side, at least one gets past the Maniacs. And I believe. Let's see here. Well, they nearly had another own goal. Oh my goodness. Tied it two. Minty Maniacs score one. And Minty Maniacs claw it back. Snatching victory from the jaws of defeat in what would have been rather humbling and disappointing fashion of giving up an own goal. Minty Maniacs are the 15th place team. They cannot even get on the podium in the Marble League. Hazers and Indigo Stars right now, and it's the Hazers that are able to chip one in here in the first half. They did it from the get-go. They just dislodged one of the balls that hit another and sent it in. This one, is anything gonna creep in? They get goal post on the other end for the Indigo Stars. Watch this one that bounced to the near side, creeping its way along the back line. And it just stops short of the goal. Hazers do move on. Seventh place team. Now, crazy cat's eyes. Their fans are fanatical when it comes to football. And that was a screamer of a goal for the Limers. Wow, that was quick. Watch this. One impact's like a one-timer in hockey. That was a laser beam going in. Nothing the Cats goalie could do on that one. Stuff can be done here, but oh no, it's pouring it on right now. Four. Four goals for the Limers. Watch this. In quick succession, they do it again. One, then two. And here comes one in from the far side. It bounces just sneakily in through the corner. And that is humiliating for the crazy cat size. What? Oh no, we've got a streaker on the course right now. Oh, I know they're up against the end line there, thinking nobody's gonna see them. No, not so much. Oh, that was a hard impact. I'm surprised we're showing this actually. Wow, it's been a while since we've had an incident like that. Security has done so much to tighten up here in the Marble League. And that impact from the security guards shows you why that is not the brightest move. Looks like one goal apiece here in the first half of Momo versus the Gliding Glaciers, two teams that are toward the middle of the standings right now. The stadium still a buzz after two interesting events there, the big 4-0 loss and then the streaker as well. Oh, that was a nice save from the goalie of the Gliding Glaciers, Sheet. One apiece. Oh, look at the goals pouring in on the near side. One gets in in the far. And we stay two apiece. There's no time to breathe in between the halves. Heading into extra time now. Ooh, almost a save by Momo, but the Gliding Glaciers put too much on that shot. 
and it just gets by. Watch it here. Boink! Wow, glaciers have to be happy with that. They're down in 11th place. That came jumping two spots in the previous event. So they're trending in the right direction. In the meantime, the bottom half are going the opposite way. The highest remaining seed is the seventh place team overall. Top six are out. Rojo Rollers in the Shining Swarm now. Oh, and the Rojo Rollers pitched in another. Watch this on the left. They had a near miss down here on their goal, hitting goal post, but in the meantime, they got one by on the far end. Not a lot of impacts on this one. I think that's where it's going to end. A one goal victory for the Rojo Rollers. Our new coach is sweating slightly less after making it through the first two rounds in first day on the job. Now the O'Rangers and the Chocolatiers. O'Rangers sent one. Oh, down toward the goalie on the far side. It didn't work. Oh, look at this late goal pours in. Oh, the O'Rangers goalie was caught napping. This one got by early on, and I think the goalie was frustrated. And then last, oh, after we cut away from that replay, one came in. Nice save there by the Chocolatiers. O'Rangers goalie still flustered. Has given up three unanswered. And that is where the match will end. The Rangers trying their hardest to send one. Past the goalie of the Chocolatiers, who denies them. You shall not pass. Minty Maniacs and the Hazers coming up now. Here in the quarterfinals, match three of four. A couple of teammates went in, but one sneaked in for the Hazers. Let's see here, was it a ricochet? No, it was just a late chip shot. The goalie was watching to the right there, where a couple of members of the Hazers had gone on an attack and forgot to look back to the left. What happens here? Oh, we've got one goal apiece. But that's not going to be enough to overcome that differential for the Minty Maniacs. The Hazers win this one 2-1. We're seeing a variety of formations over the course of this event. Not so many triangles, as you normally should see. And not a ton of bunching, necessarily, either. One goal apiece in no time at all. And they cross the line about the same time here, so we're knotted. Heading into the second half, Gliding Glaciers and the Limers. Gliding Glaciers goalie can't stretch out to the side. One gets past. Oh, but look at this. A miracle goal right in there at the end to stay alive. Goal post in. And then down there on the other end. Watch this. Just sneaking it past. Does it hold there? The goalie reacts too late. And we go to extra time. Watch on the left side there. They're trying to set up a block. Oh, and Gliding Glaciers do just that. We head into a second extra time. A streaker right past. The goalie of the Limers gives it to the Glaciers. Cool as can be. Nothing slow about that. Nice move. It just happens so fast. You're, you don't have enough eyeballs to keep up with the total number of soccer balls that are out there on the field. That's a good one we look at based on furthest round and the extra time that has advanced. So we head into the semifinals. Rojo Rollers and the Chocolatiers. Ooh, one threatening for the Chocolatiers, but the goalie keeps an eye on it. Rojo Rollers in the meantime got one in early. I didn't even see that one go in. I was watching that, that ball that was creeping along the end line. Second half. We get one pass, Chocolatiers do get one. The Rojo defender had tried to clear that ball out, but did not succeed. Watch this, left side of your screen there, tries to get behind it, it just doesn't have enough momentum. And it slides its way down into the goal. We are knotted once again, heading into extra time. Couple off the goal post, and the Chocolatiers will advance. That was a nice one. To the right side here. That impact there from the Chocolatiers. It's almost a corner kick from there. And they put a lot of spin on it, bent it inward, and they will move on to the finals. Now Hazers and the Gliding Glaciers. Ooh, we've got one, two going past. No, just one. 
Left side here. The goalie tried to make a move on it, but it just had too much heat to get past him. Gliding Glaciers. They have another miracle left in them. Let's see what they can do here. They do. They send two of them in. Oh, my goodness. A come from behind victory in the second half. Look at the attack. With relatively limited, oh, was, it, was that the Hazers sending it in on their own? We only got one look at the replay there, but I think there were more Hazers down in that direction than there were gliding glaciers. And this is big for all of our top four as we get ready for the bronze medal match. Rojo Rollers and the Hazers. The Rojo Rollers goalie stretches out, can't get it. Rojo Rollers have the same issue. One apiece. That goal, both of them, so quick. Big second half coming up here for the bronze. One gets passed for the Hazers, and I think that does it. The Hazers win the bronze. Look at that goal right past the goalie. Barely time to react, and also a lot of Hazers heading in that direction too for some support as we get ready for the gold medal match now. Both of these are guaranteed a medal, but who gets the gold? Nice goalieing thus far in the first half. Oh, but Sheet, Sheet neck knocks that one off to the side, Chalk the Tears. One got passed really early. Biting Glaciers, one more chance now. Not a lot of movement here, watch on the left side if anything's gonna happen, it's not. And the Gliding Glaciers have got their first ever gold. A one nil defeat of the Chocolatiers. They made that one look relatively easy. I guess the easiness of it all really only came in that last match. Otherwise, they were clawing to stay in the competition. They did a wonderful job to do just that. Survive in advance, survive in advance, and then one goal makes all the difference between gold and silver. Boy, I'll tell you, for a team like the Chocolatiers who are down in the bottom of the standings, still above that zone where they, they can't win the Marble League, so they, they still can, they're mathematically eligible. Well, this will help try to propel that miracle forward. Same thing for the Gliding Glaciers. They're just one spot ahead of the Chocolatiers in 11th going into this event. There was how it happened. 25 points to the Gliding Glaciers. Hazers get the bronze behind the Chocolatier Silver Rojo Rollers with their new coach just miss out. And what does this do? Look at this, Hazers up to second, but look at the colors on the left side there. 11 teams can still win the Marble League heading into the final event. Well, that is unreal. Before we get there though, a reminder, the showdown's second part is coming up first. So be sure to subscribe for that. But who the heck is gonna win this thing? It all comes down to this, the closest Marble League in history. 11 teams still alive to win the championship, including our hosts. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods for the final time here in 2021. There are our standings. You see jumps of seven, of five, anything is possible. But we have already had some off-track interesting developments as the pupils would demonstrate the track for today quickly from the Savage Speeders, their coach, went back and looked at their own data to see that their time from the steeplechase was incorrect. They submitted it to the stewards, and timing and scoring did confirm that the Savage Speeders were absolutely correct. So they have adjusted those. They ended up getting swapped erroneously with the Gliding Glaciers. So the Glaciers will lose a point, Savage Speeders will gain one. It doesn't really change much in the overall standings, but still, in the interest of everything being square, heading into this ever so close final event, we wanna make sure that it is correct. There's the line where we will determine a Marble League champion. You see the track very similar to what we run in Marble One, except a couple of sand portions, and pretty good distance too, 22 laps covering 200 meters. The starting grid determined by reverse championship order. By my count, you see 16 captains in the lineup. Our championship leaders, Rizzi at the back, Hazy in 15th, Yellup in 14th, Rojo Dos on the other end, and we're rolling to decide a Marble League champion. 
Marble League immortality as well. It's the O'Rangers leading things off with Kinno and their team captain, streaking around those two left-handers entering the second sand portion. Then it's the Green Ducks coming across the line to end the first lap. It's a three-tenths of a second lead for the Green Ducks. And you see over there in the scoring pylon, updating in real time as they run provisionally the standings of the overall championships. So you see the Raspberry Racers down there in 13th. They are lit up in gold. So you will see gold, silver, and bronze. Remember, this is as they run. The Green Ducks right now in second place. That's good enough for bronze in the overall standings. The O'Rangers, who have a big lead right now, are not lit up at all. They will win the event, but not podium. Oh, here comes Crazy Cat's Eyes. A nice move there to look up into third place and settle for fourth as they come onto the sand portion. They lose that to the Green Ducks, who had fallen back from second place. Shining Swarm right now take over in second place and in the gold medal spot just briefly there raspberry racers oh no they're still down in last but that's good enough to hold on to the silver for the moment mellow yellow back there in 11th make that 12th they all uh, briefly had the bronze medal hazers take over silver down there in 13th but it's a three tenth of a second lead for the orangers over the rojo rollers Coming around that turn there, everybody bunches up. The top four separated by just a couple of lengths. The Rojo Rollers take over. The Rangers fighting with the Green Duck Shining Swarm right there to pounce if anybody makes a mistake. And then it's a bit of a gap back to the Minty Maniac. Crazy Cat's Eye, Savage Speeders, Thunderbolts, Mellow Yellow, and the Limers making out the top 10. Our top 10 separated by under three seconds. Already about a quarter of the way through this. We saw the Green Ducks take a peek there into the gold medal spot in the overall standings, but only for a couple of brief seconds. Green Ducks fans, I'm sure that lasted an eternity. Oh, they hit the O'Rangers coming across the line by six hundredths of a second to hold on provisionally to silver. Coming out there, Rojo Dos holds on. Red Eye back up into fourth spot, looking to make a move for the hosts. Red Eye right in the draft of Kinoen. They dispatch the, sh the Shining Swarms, the Demaniacs, right back there as well. Shuffling off the line, Green Ducks, Crazy Cat's Eyes now. Second and third place, but for how much longer? Oh, Crazy Cat's Eyes riding the wall. They lose three spots down there. Oh, that's big. As these laps tick by, extremely fast. The Green Ducks, provisional gold medalists, four tenths of a second over the Rojo Rollers, Rojo Dos. Then it's a gap back to the O'Rangers, Shining Swarm, Minty Maniacs. Nice move up front there to take the lead through the track section onto the second sand for Rojo Dos. Again, not lit up like the Green Ducks are for Bronze, but a nice near half a second lead. A good battle coming off the belt there, Mellow Yellow vaults up into third spot, and they are provisional champions right now. If they hold it and if things do not change, of course, they will, we're not even to the halfway point yet. Green Ducks, Mellow Yellow, Shining Swarm, scissoring back and forth, trying to keep the O'Rangers behind them, but they can't do it coming off the belt. O'Rangers are in fact gonna get by Mellow Yellow. Are they gonna have a look here past the Green Ducks for second place? No, not that time. Some blocks being laid down, and if you lose momentum for an instant, you will lose spots. Half a second for the Green Ducks. Over the Rojo Rollers, then the O'Rangers, then Mellow Yellow. Minty Maniac, Shining Swarm. Here comes another charge for Mellow Yellow. They try the outside, back to the middle of the track. They get second place, and that's as far as they go for right now. Green Ducks, hold on to it. With this top four, separated by eight-tenths of a second. Oh, and look at this, the Green Ducks struggle on the conveyor belt. They fall to fourth. Yellow takes the lead and takes the provisional championship for now. Rojo Dos tries to fight back, but loses it, entering the circuit section. Oh, Rangers, shadowing, mellow yellow. They're gonna be one step apart, coming up the belt. Oh, and an impact heading into the first turn. And that closeness was blown away. Here comes Minty Maniacs into second place. Minty Maniacs, they've got some speed on this lap. If we were doing fastest lap, I'm not sure that we are. That would probably be up there. Two tenths now is all they are behind Mellow Yellow. That closes up through the first sector onto the sand once again. They're both doing a decent job of keeping off the wall. 
Rojo Rollers, or Rangers, Momo back there in fifth. They are lit up in bronze right now provisionally. That would be huge for them as they get up into fourth. Two tenths between the top two, then it's a second and a half back to the Rojo Rollers. Anybody gonna be able to bridge that gap? Mellow Yellow, look at that good job staying down the middle up until the last there. And that's what you have to do to make some good advancement in this type of event. One bump off the wall could send you catapulting down the order and perhaps off of the Marble League podium. Looking strong though, up front are both of our top two, Mellow Yellow and Minty Maniacs. And it's Rojo Dose who just had, we're hearing a hard impact with Nemo, shooting them back into fifth spot. It's not enough to deny Momo a medal. Nemo has some work to do. And Red Eye up into third spot there. Nice move. Trying to get on the overall podium, which they currently have in bronze. The stadium torn between erupting and a pensive silence, wondering if they're going to be able to hold on. Everybody, their breath in their throats. Red Eye right on Mitty Maniacs. Top three are finishers in the marathon a season ago. So you have to think, these are strong favorites. Ooh, oh, Rangers can't get by Red Eye. If there's a marble that could handle circuits and could handle multi-lap racing, you know from Marbula One that it's Red Eye. But Mellow Yellow have the lead right now to the tune of two seconds. Oh my gosh, they've got two laps to go between them and a championship. Oh, but they're slow through the first sector. Here come the Minty Maniacs to the outside. They go back and forth. They try to take the inside, but sweeping around the outside. Minty Maniacs take it, but only briefly. Back and forth they come, but this is letting the O-Rangers and the Rojo Rollers close up on them. That two second lead is a little over a tenth. Mellow Yellow with two laps to go on this circuit. Minty Maniacs on a bump off the wall, get by. Here come the O-Rangers trying to deny them as well, and they do. Mellow Yellow falls back to third place. They're still provisionally in gold as they cross the line in second here, but it's gonna depend on what the rest of the teams do. Our championship leaders, the Raspberry Racers, are stuck down in dead last. Gliding Glaciers holding on right now in sixth spot. Mellow Yellow in second place. It would be enough, but they lose it. Coming across the line. They do lose second place, but they do not lose the Marble League. How mellow of them to finish in third and still capture the 2021 Marble League Championship. Let's not overlook Minty Fresh winning the gold in the finale for the second time in two years. Oh, there was the difficulty getting on to the belt for Billy. But this was not only an event that came down to the final corners. It came down to the final corners for the rest of the field. Remember, 11 teams were still eligible to win. So even though Mellow Yellow got passed at the end to fall into third, that provisionally gave them gold. We had to wait for the rest of the finishers to make sure that somebody else didn't make some incredible leap to get up there and deny them. But hey, first, let's celebrate. Our winners in this event, Minty Fresh gets the gold, Kinoan, the fourth Marble League medal as silver, and Yellow back there in the bronze medal spot. That is their third Marble League medal. But it's the important one here today, most important, in Mellow Yellow fans, the 2021 Marble League champions five years ago, they lost the championship by one hundredth of a second. And of course, last season did not go well for them at all. But look at what they were able to do. Redemption this year. They came into this event in third place, some nine points behind the Raspberry Racers. They had two golds, two silvers, and a bronze. Raspberry Racers will finish second. The Gliding Glaciers will get third. That is tremendous for them. They had jumped seven spots coming into this event. They jumped one more at the end of it. In the meantime, we are happy that Big Head Games Studio is developing the Marble League game. That'll be coming to you fairly soon. This Marble League will come to an end, but we will let you know who will be hosting the next Marble League at the end of this video. Minos Philoctos. Our music, time check, the acapella group doing the chants, 
Turn up your volume now and enjoy the closing ceremony of the Marble League. I'm Greg Woods. Thanks for watching, everyone.